Welcome to Through the Wire. Through the Wire. We're back in full effect. Uh, well, we're, we're missing Anwar again, but the, the Through the Wire boys are here. Can I, can, I, can I say something right off the top of this show? No, because I have to say something before I forget. <laughs> really, really quick. Really, <laughs> okay. really, really quick. Really, really quick. I always do. These are the ones that make me feel the best, and I feel like I have to do. I want to give a big shout out to Malachi for his 15th birthday. The reason is because his mom DM'd me and saying he was a big, big fan. And recently, it's been, I've been getting messages like that from a mom, a girlfriend, or something. When people do that, that let me know how much they that really person do. they love is a fan. Mm-hmm. Yep. So shout out to Malachi. Shout out to Malachi. Happy birthday. I just had to get that out the way before I forgot because I'd have been mad if I forgot. Also, happy birthday to my pops. Um, turned <laughs> he turned 37 yesterday. Happy shout birthday to Cannon to Malachi. Um, the first thing we should say, actually, is that we still have a live show in Miami. Uh, the 15th of June, which is like a week from now, which is crazy. We're going to be in Miami living it up. And the way the Miami Heat just plays, it seems like game six is going to be a thing. So we we will be in there for game six, performing in front of y'all beautiful people. That is Thursday, June 15th. The doors open at 530. The show starts at six. And the RSVP is in the description. It's ttwtour.com. It is completely free. It is at the uh, the Oasis Wynwood in Miami, Florida. Don't I, I don't know if I pronounced that right, but still, it's still open to the public right now. But you cannot get in without a free RSVP. So hit the link in the description. Do what you got to do. Show up for the show. I think uh, anybody that was at the Philly show let you know that we... We do our thing. It was fun. We do our thing. Back to my original rant, though. All right, all right. So we've been doing this podcast for five years, right? This is the f- this is the fifth seat. We're wrapping up the fifth season of Through the Wire being the thing. First of all, we should celebrate once the finals is over. Clap but it up. we still got at least four more games or something. Um, Why we just clap? Man, he's so. We should clap more. We honestly, we should, yeah, you just clap more. No, we're about we to be. No, we didn't. We're about to be uh, yeah, ending the fifth we'll season. Clap when we about when we do it. I recorded, produced, and performed on this podcast for five fucking years. So if I want to take a day off to go to a good friend's wedding, then I should be able to do that. Kenny Beecham don't low manage, my boy. <laughs> that shit was in my house for the first four years of the podcast. There was no such thing as low management. I had to be that every was, fucking you day. You seen the post, right, with, from clips where I had the like, clips. Yeah, and it had all the numbers of like the days we missed. Or no, I didn't. Year. Yeah, he went through and counted all. There the was days. one year. Crazy. There was one year. I think it was twenty twenty one. Probably was COVID year. Pretty sure it was. But me, you, and D Mills didn't miss a single pod. I think P missed like a couple. Well, there's nowhere nowhere to go. So there's I no know, reason to like miss a podcast here. Um, I think Pierre missed nine total podcasts in five years. Yeah, that's pretty Mike damn has good. Missed five. That's damn, Mike. I only missed three. You missed. Uh, what was your numbers? Yeah, you didn't miss many. It can't be many because they all. I, I'm I mean, produced no, actually, everything. No, actually, no. I think this was your most missed year with like three. Well, because yeah. now we have Anwar in in Austin here, so I can afford to not be the producer anymore. A shout out to them. I might miss seven straight episodes next month or next year. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I don't give a fuck about how many days I miss. I'm gonna miss whenever I feel like. It. <laughs> <laughs> I got a wedding coming up. Yeah, that I'm going to. Is it in August? I have a wedding in Man, August, too, that I have to go to. It's oh, KB, one in August, and I think it's one in Mike, July. KB missed five. Mike missed seven. P missed nine. I missed three. Yeah, when you talk about Iron years Man. of work, I, I, I'll take <laughs> That's damn near nothing. I'm, yeah, yeah five, actually, five in five years is pretty damn I'm good. I'm mad that yeah. it's only nine when you talk about <laughs> years. Because we do two episodes a week. No matter what. Even when there's nothing going on in the NBA season, we still come to work. So that's no vacation. There's been no we have none of nobody here is taking a vacation. Other D Mills took one vacation in five years. I took a vacation. Um, and my, uh, Pierre is taking one vacation. I've never been on vacation. You, Mike has you never can count the time I vacation. That, I, went, I don't count that wedding as vacation. I went to, but you like, might as well. <laughs> I went to Indiana <laughs> Beach one time. You can count that as vacation. It's not no, even some shit I wanted. No, to actually, oh you cannot. God. Indiana my, Beach is not a vacation. Yeah, that that's, was some shit my parents and my auntie they see that exactly. You went with your fucking mom. I did. Did you enjoy it? Like, were you happy to be there? Uh, it probably if, be, you had to, if, you say, if I, I had say, the right uh, group there, I feel like it was only so much fun you could have there because it's mostly kids there. Yeah, but if I had the right group, it might be a little bit fun. Yeah, I don't want to go on vacation with a bunch of kids or my parents. Yeah. Um, <laughs> NBA Finals, ladies and gentlemen, we got ourselves a series. They say uh, the series doesn't start until a road team wins a game, and the Miami Heat did that in Denver, and um, it it wasn't it was the pretty one. So how many no. years we been five years? It's fifth season. So if there is fifty two weeks in a year. <laughs> Times two episodes. That's 104. Yep. Times five. Times five is 520. 
It's pretty damn good. So we have been here. We on our uh, Steve Kerr free take throw a few when we percentage. started off at one episode per week. Said it what? Oh yeah, true. We, we weren't doing two times a week to start off week. with. Yeah. yeah, that was because people had real jobs back then. You couldn't afford to do two state shows only on Saturday. Yeah. Portillos and what? U-Haul and <sighs> other stuff. Uh, NBA Finals, though. The Miami Heat came into uh, the Denver Shout Nuggets territory and won behind Duncan Robinson, 10 straight points in the fourth quarter. Jimmy mm-hmm. Butler popping in clutch. Um, an overall, a terrible effort performance, if you ask Michael Malone from the Denver Nuggets. How y'all feel about game two? I liked it. I'm so excited to get in here and talk about it. I don't know if you watched the last episode, but we were in here talking about adjustments. And I kept saying, man, I know it's it's a lot easier said than done, but I am waiting to see if the Miami Heat are going to go with the let Jokic beat us type philosophy. And when I say let him whoa, beat whoa, us. Don't don't let Coach I mean, Eric Spoelstra hear that. I mean, scoring-wise. It's not because, like you got an untrained eye because of Eric Spoelstra. Because, um, yeah, I've been, I've been seeing that. But <laughs> the, the assist part of Jokic really gets him going, and it, it gets everybody else going, which I think makes them the most dangerous. Mm-hmm. And um, like I said, it's easier said than done because those guys have to miss shots and they're super, super talented. But uh, that and then Kevin Love, I came up here and spoke about. And um, both of those things worked, and, and, and it turned out to be a win for them. Obviously, a lot of other things um, had to happen, like KCP and MPJ. Being and, awful. Some of their the, – probably both of their worst games of the playoffs so far. MPJ literally had to get benched in the last five minutes because his ass was defensively blowing assignments and just – Turn the ball. It was just and a fouling lot. for that, no reason. That fourth quarter for him was just so bad. Mike Malone said, "Bruce Brown, go get his ass." Yeah, it, there was <laughs> there was two different times where Michael Porter Jr. Quarter too. Yeah, in the second quarter where he missed an assignment or whatever, and they immediately yanked him. Yeah, he got that one foul on Bam out of bio where Bam dunked just on. dunked, and it was, the coach was like, "Get get your ass out of here." And there's another rotation where he missed it, and Jamal Murray looked at him and pointed, and then I saw Bruce Brown get his ass off the bench to come into the game. This is the least amount of minutes Michael Porter Jr. played in the playoffs because. He was virtually unplayable in that one, which was yeah. it's saying something because he's he's such a talented offensive player and he's such a flamethrower when he's going that like a lot of times you can live with his lack of defensive effort and stuff. But for the most part, defensively he's been good this entire playoff run. Yeah, he's been solid. Um, but in this one, he wasn't scoring and he was missing assignments. So there's no reason. He there's missed, no reason to play. He missed the biggest assignment on Gabe Vincent as well, <clears throat> the one where Jimmy stepped stepped on a, on a baseline and he got the. The ball. I don't know if y'all saw that. Oh, well, Jimmy actually stepped out of bounds. He did step yeah. out of bounds after the replay. We was able to see he did. They didn't count. They didn't say he stepped out of bounds, but MPJ in that possession. I was just like, what the hell? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I feel good, though, if I'm still the Nuggets. I know you lost that game, but. Mike was up here saying they're going to get swept. He said that boy is dead in the water. Yeah, I did. The title of the video was also overreactions. No, it wasn't. See, you don't, you don't <laughs> well, actually. <that's> <laughs> Mike is so detached from everything through the wire. He shows up to do the podcast, and he doesn't look at the YouTube video. We drop a video, and I'm like, we we all, the last video we dropped, go watch that. The uh, Basketball Simon Says is a fucking amazing video. We had a lot of fun doing that. I bet you didn't watch it back, did you? Personal reasons. He here, he just here to collect a check. For for real. <laughs> here so he don't get fined. Shit. I ain't never been I'm on the Discord. So I've never <laughs> been in the Discord and Mike like, yeah, getting ready for this episode or <laughs> um, you know, uh putting together that nigga just say, Hey. Oh, I just forgot about my pep talk I was gonna give today. Fuck. You can do it after. You can yeah. do it now. Okay, when I was in Toronto, I met and talked to a bunch of very influential people, not necessarily in sports, but just in general, like very high level business people and very affluent is that the word very rich people i mentioned that that wedding was the most expensive wedding i've ever been to and they and i was just talking to people and i'm heavily inspired and i was trying to exp- I, this is one of the things i want to explain in our pep talk what we do right now i hope y'all link in place it because this is the bare minimum amount of work we're gonna have to do for the future think about what we do we do two times a week and we watch basketball this next chapter whatever it looks like the intake is going up. Yes. Okay. But you got to fucking watch back the videos I, at the bare I, I, minimum. I, I'm not going to lie. I believe there's uh, there's complacency here. Absolutely. It's hard not to get complacent when we've been on – when you're on salary in general, right? It's it's like, okay, I ain't got to work as hard because there's no benefit in that, you know? Yeah, because like the, no matter what, I know I'm bro. getting this much a month or whatever. But, like, the next chapter, I mean, we're, I think we're all going to be on salary. That's a 50-50, though. I think part of that is also cap. Where when you're doing something and you want to do it at a high level, you put that work in. I talked to somebody, and they recommended a podcast episode, and I listened to that podcast episode, and it was um the guest on it was Ernie Johnson. Everybody knows Ernie's one of the fucking goats at what he does. 
And what Ernie said fucking inspire me. Because we're in a very similar situation where like our TikToks and shorts are popping off. So every single episode that we do of Through the Wire, there are new people watching. Like we have this core fan base, but also because somebody just watched our TikTok of us drafting two on two seven footers, somebody be like, okay, let me tune into this. Spot. Which means that every single episode, there's somebody new that you need to come hook onto the show. Yep. We have to make every single show the best show possible because it's new for somebody. The last episode we did, this episode is the worst fucking episode we'll ever do again. And if we have that mindset going into the next episode and the episode after that, there's no limit to what the fuck we can do. I feel that 100%. That shit was going on with what IT said when he was talking about every time he stepped on that floor, it was somebody that probably did. Well, it was definitely somebody who didn't know his name, but by the time they left, they was going to know what the fuck he or who the that fuck he was. That good, but is that the mindset that comes to the podcast? It is today. From that moment, I will not come onto this podcast with complacency and feel like going through the motions anymore. This podcast... In the next podcast, I'm gonna be better, hyped. and I'm gonna be better. I was hyped be when you said you had a a, a pep. That's like just the pep that's the bare minimum. The rest of the stuff I can't say on the podcast, but we Good. can talk. That's about also kept, Mike, because we had a pep talk two months ago when niggas were supposed to get on their grinds and shit. And what happened? Remember when KB was like, "Man, we all gonna put the whatever niggas been doing." I been, your, you I've been grinding my I, I grind my stream damn near every at? fucking day. Remember when we were talking? My videos and this shit I could producers? probably do better, and this shit I will do better. But it's just like for people at home. Yeah, it was April, the beginning of April. I said, "Hey, I'm gonna be on y'all ass." Cause I like to see myself as a content factory. I'm not saying it's all great, but I upload a shit ton of videos, and I, I'm like a source when it comes to growth and development in the social media worlds, YouTube and stuff. So I asked everybody, "What is your goal for the month?" Mike said he wanted to stream X amount of hours, whatever. Pierre, and he said he wanted to start uploading to YouTube, which is the part that I, was I did. That is that's the next step. That that would be the next step I have in terms of growth. We could talk. I, I do want to get back to the NBA Finals because it's important. Yes, yes. But we could we could get back to this. But Pierre gave his own goal, which was I forgot a, a couple a week or something like that. And D Mills mm -hmm. also. I think D Mills was two a week, two full reviews a week. Um, and I wasn't on on y'all ass the way I wanted to be. But we'll restart that to the finals. Back to the finals. Back to the NBA Finals. Um, Mike Malone after Game One came to the press conference and said, "Hey, I know we won." But I don't feel like we played a good game. In the fourth quarter, the, the Miami Heat shot 60% from three. They had a comeback or whatever. If we play like this again, we're going to lose the next game and eventually lose the series. And that's kind of the way they did it. Um, I felt like in the first half, the Miami Heat looked like the better team, and yet they went into halftime down by like six or seven. Six. That second and, quarter was pretty yeah. never dominant. Because the bench came in. Yeah. Bruce Brown, Christian Brown, Jeff Green, they all came in and like – the the starters have been on some BS, and then I think in that run they were like it was like a, a fourteen to two run or whatever because they were they down. The quarter twenty to six. And yeah, yeah Jokic it was, went it was to the bench and they they went on that run. They had uh, Jeff Green and Aaron Gordon on Bam and they was locking up. Mm -hmm. Bam, I don't know. There was he started the game off really strong. I I don't know what it is, but those fadeaway jump shots he can hit, he can make them, but it's so hard to sustain that over the course of the game. And he had a lot where he missed them. I actually like this game better than last Bam game. I know last Bam game he had like twenty six points on twenty five shots. He was being mm -hmm. aggressive, but this one I felt like he was getting to the actual basket more than. I mean, he has zero free throw attempts in game one. Like they as a team, they had two free throw attempts throughout the entire game. But I think he facilitated well, and I think that he. I mean, he hit two very clutch free throws down the stretch. Where it's like, I think we were all in Discord, and Terrence was like, he at least missing one of these. He at least missing one. He knocked them things down. He got that big block on Jamal Murray that might have been a goal 10. They didn't call it, so we counted it as a block. I thought he played a good game two versus his game one, where the Denver Nuggets like, we'll let, we let his ass take that mid-range jump shot because that's one point per possession because he's shooting 50% on that. Yeah. We'll live. Yeah. In the game two, he was way more aggressive. Jimmy was too, getting to the line and facilitating. I think the facilitator. Heat's defense was just more... Just more intense. Maybe it was just because they had a little bit more wind underneath them. But even with Jokic having those four assists, I, I kind of look at more of the five turnovers. I feel like that's more of the thing that it was. It was more so the pressure. Because hypothetically, and I, it, basketball doesn't work like this, but hypothetically speaking, he could have had probably like nine or ten assists. Mm -hmm. You know, Jamal Murray and MPJ. MPJ was bad. Jamal Murray had a lot of good looks and MPJ too. They had a lot of decent looks they could have made that could have gotten those, uh, those assists. He had one where it was just like, he had one where he they were kind of digging on him, but he spent off the double team and he did a little post hook. It ended up being a lob to Aaron Gordon. So naturally, he just spreads the ball around so well. It's just like this is the beauty of basketball because no star on the no star on the on the court wants to put up forty points at all. 
Jimmy Butler wants to make sure his team is involved. Bam wants to do the same. Jokic wants to do the same. This is just like everybody's, you know, everybody has that chance to go. And I, it's just like you don't see that in the finals. They were very aggressive on Jamal Murray. I love the addition of putting Kevin Love in and letting Jimmy guard Jamal Murray. I thought that was very smart. And then they just, they randomly threw blitzes at him. And I thought, Jamal Murray's probably not used to that throughout the course of the game. It's usually Jokic getting all that attention. Mm -hmm. But now when you slow down Jamal Murray and you slow down MPJ, now you see that you have a recipe to actually help you win. Not saying that they're, a subs, they're like daring Jokic to score. They're just pretty much just saying, MPJ and Jamal Murray, we know if we slow y'all down that we have a way greater chance of winning this game. But if we let y'all get y'all 18 to 25 points a game mm -hmm. and Jokic also gets his 27 with 11 assists, we're pretty much done. Yeah, they were able to get back. And also, yeah. the shots that they did miss, like I, like I was saying, off the uh, Jokic passes, they weren't the back doors that we've seen yeah. more. They were more so jumpers, which I think you would rather rely on than having Aaron Gordon get those cuts to the rim and stuff like that. I mean, game one, Aaron Gordon started off with 14 points in the first quarter because he they was all dunks. using and abusing the small defenders. And now with Kevin Love being in there, I mean, they're the same size. Kevin Love shot two of nine, I'm pretty sure. He had a really good game. Yeah, I think yeah, he had a great shot. And he rebounded the ball well. Two and nine, ten rebounds, three were offensive. And in a game like this, in a time like this, every possession matters. So when you win a game by one possession and you look at and see a guy have three offensive rebounds that got you three extra possessions, that's the type of stuff that turns the game around. And that, for me, it was the offense for the Miami Heat. I think that the, the way that they started the game, it was a 10-2 start, uh, Max Struess making the shots uh, throughout the course of the game. It, it started to be Gabe Vincent, who was consistently there to make perimeter shots. When they get those shots falling, it, they feed off of that because they know that they have a legitimate chance to win. It's much harder for the Heat to just win off strictly defense and no shots being made. And that's why I got up here and talked about the 1 of 17 of Struess and Kayla Martin in game one. Because it's like, yeah, I'm not saying these dudes are going to go off for 30. But if the Miami Heat can get any production from there, from them, that's – the opposite of uh, one of 17, I think they have a much better chance. And I was going off of how they played in the fourth quarter in game one when they lost, which is a quarter that they won. That was their best quarter as well. This game, game two, the fourth quarter was their best quarter um, as well. So they're winning um, the only quarter is the fourth quarter, with which and they're a, a plus in. Every other quarter, the, the Nuggets are a plus in. So um, I'm loving that, and I'm loving Jimmy Butler. You don't have to have the 40, and that's what we talked about. One of y'all asked on the last podcast, would you rather have Jimmy have a Milwaukee Buck-type game or the role players uh, step out? Mike, I think you asked the question. I can't remember the specific thing. Um, I think I was just saying, like, would, would you need the role players to step it up in this game too or more so look for Jimmy or, or Bam to really have that explosive game? And game two is why my answer was the role players because I feel like when they are knocking down shots – and you're not having to rely on Jimmy Butler to go get 40 or 50, mm -hmm. as we've seen him do. I just don't think that that's his nature of a basketball player to the core. Can he do it? Obviously, yes, we've seen it. But on a game like game two, when he is able to make those plays like he was for the shooters, he had nine assists. And in the second half, five of those nine assists came from him getting two feet in the paint. I went back and rewatched every single assist. And then specifically that second half, he literally got in the paint every time and made a play for Gabe Vincent, Max Struess, um, Kayla Martin. He made he missed the mid-range, got his own offensive rebound, hit Kayla Martin in the left corner. Boom. That was a dagger to me. That was a big me. shot. That yeah, was, that a, was a dagger. Shot. Put them back up 12. But like that, and I, and it's, it's to a certain extent, I like it, but Denver got to be a lot more sharper mm -hmm. on defense because they switch. And I, when I rewatched some of the film, a lot of open shots for Miami's role players came at the hands of them switching. And it's like, oh, me and KB both running at Struess, and we didn't know that we had to go to Jimmy. Or this time, mm -hmm. I, I get over the screen, yeah. so he don't have to switch, but he's still trying to switch. So now Cody Zeller was open on a roll. So it's like when you're switching, you got to be sharp. And I feel like in game one, and it's no big deal because they only lost about three. They lost mm -hmm. a one-possession yep. game. But in game one, the Nuggets came out with a different sharpness Mm -hmm. that they kind of let down in game two and just a little bit. The Shrews threes was big because, for one, I think he it was early in the game. He started off, Eric Spolch had like a double screen for him out of bounds. He hit that one. And the screens you're talking about, those little go screens where he doing it and pop that real and quick, those were so big because then his next three that he hit was just a catch-and-shoot three with just confidence. Because KCP 
help somebody too somebody much. was helping too yeah, much and it's just like hey, I'm Jimmy feeling it much. I'm gonna let this go and I think that's so like that's that's what I'm saying it's just like the role of the stars understand like everything is also with the role players they can't just pull it out by themselves the Jimmy Butler shit we seen in the first series with against Milwaukee averaging whatever he was 35 or whatever it's just unrealistic we just have we have we legitimately un- haven't seen it since yeah it's just unrealistic <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I, I remember there was a play stats. in the fourth quarter that Eric Spolstra ran twice, and he got buckets out of him. And it was literally just a simple curl screen for Duncan Robinson. Mm-hmm. One play, he come off, gave Vincent, pop out, corner three, wide open. That's where you get the meme of him side eye, dude. Then literally the next play down, he, Eric Spolstra ran the same exact play. Duncan Robinson comes off the curl, goes straight to the basket, layup. Apparently, Duncan Robinson is a great finisher going to the basket. Hey, <laughs> add it to his bag. Add it to his bag. He's been working on that type of stuff for years. Man. Bro, Bro, he's been working on it. Rose will game. go to the basket strong as hell and finish now. He <laughs> he has never been like, oh, well, it's not like he's been in the league for 10 years. But in the first couple years of his career, he wasn't like that fiery. No. He's flexing on people, bro, in the NBA Finals. That's crazy. And then the last series in Boston, he was talking to the crowd. Yeah, I'm like, he, damn. Yeah. Hey, anytime he finish strong great. at the basket, he make you want to flex. When you get <laughs> $90 million and a motherfucker say all that shit about you, you better come out and have it. You, you don't know when the next time yeah. you're gonna play. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now he look like a guy that's probably like a key rotational piece. Absolutely. Because it's gonna be hard not to play him. Jimmy Butler averaged 37 and a half in the first series, 24 and a half, and then 20, 24 and a half again. So yeah, we haven't seen him be uh, take over 50 he points. Two games, but he got to be averaging low 17. 17. Okay. 17. Um, but I, again, I think game two, even though he didn't shoot it well, he was important. He, he was super important. Mm-hmm. Um, he came in the fourth. Late in the fourth, he had some big shots, and I just think facility. I think he ended up with nine assists or so. Um, just good facilitating, good defense on Jamal Murray. Like that's more of a Jimmy Butler performance. Um, that's such a great move, basketball. You want you want at least one like hyper ridiculous Jimmy Butler game because it feels like when he has that, they're not going to lose. Mm-hmm. If a, he have a forty, it feels like they're not going to lose. To me, it's a chess. It's a, it's like a chess match. Or I'm I'm more checkers. I don't. I'm not going to say like I got no chess. Wait, just say chess, just because. It's, it's like not, higher level. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. higher level. But you have a game like game two where the nine assists in a facilitating is going to pay off for a game three or game four performance because now when the Nuggets are in there watching film, they're highlighting Michael Porter Jr., you're not closing out on shooters. KCP, you helped over too much early on on this Max Struess three. That's going to be in the film room. So now those guys aren't going to help as much. And now it opens up for Jimmy Butler to have a lot more easier avenues to drive and do his spin mid range or to go baseline and get the mid or to attack. But when you got everybody focusing in on you, it's much more harder to find those scoring avenues, especially in like game one where they was missing so many damn shots. But for them to make those shots, it puts a different type of pressure on the defense so they can't really key in on Jimmy Butler and he can really have one-on-one type situations. So I think that's why it's important for guys like him to not overly stress it and just kind of go within the flow, empower your teammates. If somebody's open, kick it to them and make the right play because later on in the series, it's going to come down to a fact where somebody's going to be like, oh, shit, I got to find Gabe Vince and I can't really. And then he'll, be ha- he'll have a one-on-one situation with somebody that he can – my fault, I just – you good? I just scratched the. <laughs> I'm just talking to um, and yeah, I think it'll. I think it'll help later on down the series. But mm-hmm. I, I think that's why it's important to be a willing passer as a star, mm-hmm. um, who's like the first option. Because if you show teams that you're willing to win by making the right play, then mm-hmm. they have to respect your teammates. But if you're just out there trying to shoot everything and shoot y'all into a win. The motherfuckers, no, he ain't finna pass. <laughs> like Michael Porter Jr., I would never play him for a pass. Ever. I would never. Mm-hmm. Ever. Why would I ever, ever play just like him? one assist? Y'all yeah. see that screenshot? Yeah. Oh, Hall- 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 yeah. Why would I ever play yeah. him? For, uh, and Jamal Murray sitting under the basket wide yeah. open. And Jokic. Jokic was standing under the basket. And Aaron Gordon. It oh, was three of them. <laughs> you know what I lo- also love about this, like, this series? It ain't much like bad body language. You see a lot of teams, like both teams are really trying to compete. I was listening to, to Draymond's podcast. He's yeah, I seen him. I, um, I didn't even finish the whole thing, but he was just initially talking about how, like, at the end of the first quarter, Jamal Murray could have passed Jokic the ball, but he took a, a kind of like a crazy shot. Jokic ain't do nothing but look like he clapped his hands. It was like, man, that shit was close. Yeah, at the end of the game, same thing. When you, when Jamal Murray took the shot, Jokic had no reaction. You know, mm-hmm. he was. I thought it was a good look, all yeah, things considered. Too. 
a lot of people been talking about should they have used the timeout? Should the Heat have fouled? I mean, we all whenever that happens, we always just live in this fictional world that like everything is gonna be perfect if you draw it up or whatever. I thought they got a decent look from a dude that just hit the previous two threes. And mm-hmm. I'm also not a fan of just trying to foul because the de- I feel like as an offensive player with a high IQ, you know that they're gonna foul. So you come any. I'm just gonna shoot it now. Now I get three free throws. You know what, Jimmy looked like for so they at he looked at Spoelstra, asked like yeah. foul. Spoelstra said no, but Jimmy reached in and like knocked the ball yes, away for did. a split second, and I thought that was his intentional foul attempt. For for Spoelstra to say don't foul and him still to reach in for a potential steal was funny because <laughs> because I think that the referees could have potentially saw that as a as, a as intentional, a intentional foul. foul attempt. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad ooh. the refs didn't call that. I'm glad they didn't either. Kevin Love, then he who did he hug? Oh, he ha- he hugged, he hugged Gabe Vincent Gabe after Vincent. not passing the yeah. ball. That's what I was yeah. to yeah. say to, to Mike's point. Um, the energy in that team on both of these teams just seemed like those are locker rooms that you would love to be in. Don't, two, don't two, let Mike Malone hit that. He's two, fucking furious with his team right now. Two great things that <laughs> I heard. He Austin Rivers was on a podcast, and he said he hate that everybody saying the Nuggets are deep because they're not that deep. They're not I, that deep. I agree. Mm-hmm. Um, he's also a little salty that he's not on a team because <laughs> he didn't get the chance to play with a fully healthy team. Right. He was on there with no Jamal Murray, no Michael Porter Jr. Praying for Damian Lillard to miss a shot. Facts. <laughs> Secondly, yeah, he probably wouldn't be getting PT right now. That anymore. Draymond Green podcast, Steve Kerr took that and took shots at his own team. Oh, yeah. Mm. What'd he say? Because he was saying, like, you look at teams like Miami and, like, how guys are always ready to play. Duncan Robinson went stretches without playing. Kevin Love went straight, and now he's starting. And he's like, that's a championship and winning team when everybody's bought in and guys ain't complaining about their minutes <laughs> or why I'm not. And they, all of Warriors' Twitter is just like, oh, those are subliminal shots at Kaminga and Jordan Poole. Yeah. And I'm like, uh-oh. He even said some alone has to come into the locker room and saying shit like about not playing. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, damn. It's getting spicy. Yeah. It's getting spicy. Whoever replaces Bob Myers. Let's say that podcast, man. It's getting spicy. <laughs> gotta, gotta figure that out. They um, have a very interesting offense. What are we looking at for game three? Man, I mean, if uh, I can't, I, I don't want to speak in super extremes, but I, it feels like a must win scenario for the Denver Nuggets. Yeah, you have to. One of these, you have to win one of these games. Because if you go down and Miami protects home court, it's looking very uh, glim. What if Miami don't protect their home court? Then, then we got then a long then series. Then we got game five. Then that we got a four games, five game yeah, right? game series. Yeah, because I don't think Miami's gonna go in and win in Denver in an elimination game. So I we're think. there for game six. We're gonna be in Miami, not in the arena for people that we're, we're performing. But the game is gonna be on after whatever. If they somehow win the series in six, and we're in Miami, that like while crazy. people celebrating and stuff, mm-hmm. that would be ridiculous. I wonder if that's gonna affect Tootsie's. No. Oh. Let's, I guess we'll find out. Jimmy Butler <laughs> popping that bitch all of a sudden. Yeah. Oh, you know set. all the celebrities oh. going to be in town that night too? Yeah. We we might not get our section because I'm not throwing money against Jimmy Butler. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good on it. <laughs> no, all the dancers will just be over there. We'll still have our section. It'll just, It'll just be, be us four just sitting there <laughs> with Armoire. With Armoire's <laughs> <War. laughs> new painted nails. I'm dead. If he gets them, <laughs> bro, we're going to have to send him down. If There's Anwar, nothing wrong with painting nails, but painting nails because Drake painted nails. That's the problem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. If Anwar coming here, I'm not a painting nails guy at all. But if that's what your flavor is, and you're doing it off the strength of yourself, I, I endorse it. Anything a person do off the strength of themselves, I endorse. But if you come in here because Drake, Drake did it. <laughs> Austin, get ready for a full time job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go in there and vouch for you, to <laughs> Uh, um, but yeah, I, I think game three is going to be interesting. It's going to be super important. Um, uh, I'm loving the fact that this is a chess match. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Miami, you know, doing a little matchup zones and all these different things. How can the Nuggets come out and give it a twist and, and give them something that they haven't seen? And then Spoke gonna have to respond. And then it's also like, who gonna go out and get this motherfucker? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. It's one one. Somebody gonna have to go out and take it after a while. Like yeah. sometimes there's not that many <laughs> chess moves to, that exactly. you can really make because at some point y'all are pretty even keeled. You're both in the NBA finals. Mm-hmm. But the Kevin Love being a certain to the starting lineup, I want to I want to see what Mike Malone's counter to that is because it definitely mucked up a lot of shit for Jamal Murray and MPJ because now all the defenders are no longer trying to stop Aaron Gordon from dominating dominating in the paint. So I'm very curious to see what Mike Malone could do to counter that because that's. What if big. he don't counter? Where if he say there's no way MPJ shoots this way the rest right. of the I think that a lot of what the Denver Nuggets is going to do is just play the same game, but 
I, again, on Mike Malone, what Mike Malone is saying is that their effort has been poor. Mm-hmm. It's the NBA Finals. I shouldn't have to give you a pep talk to get your effort high. If they play at the same effort they played in the conference finals where they was fucking the Lakers up, and well, it was a you close just, You don't even got to say that. You could just say game one. Game one, obviously, the Heat kind of made it a game, but they looked a lot sharper, and that's probably all it really is because the Heat, they're, they're, they got to be best in the league at these grinded out games. And oh, you, you want to not... know, know the stat? What? They, they have six wins in this playoff, so they were down by, um, down by eight points in the fourth quarter. They have six. Mm-hmm. Every other team that has been down by eight points in going like in the fourth quarter has one total win. They're like one in like forty, and the mm-hmm. Heat have six of them this play this playoffs. They've played like forty five games with a five point swing this season. Yeah. For like forty five, bro, that is insane. That being said, they're you just, built. You don't you don't want to go to a close game against the Miami Heat. For real, simple as that. And it's just like part of that grit and grind type game is you have to kind of keep them out the foul line. The first mm-hmm. game was kind of anomaly because they shot what was it two or three. But they, they got to stop on those kind of ridiculous fouls. The first KCP foul was whatever, but you're going to do it. You gave him six free throws, yeah. you know. Then and he, then, he got the Cal Lowry one was ugly because Cal Lowry was like 50 feet from the from the rim, it felt like. KCP had a smart vet move, too. Earlier in that game, Gabe Vincent slipped. and Cal- He got that, yeah. And KCP literally just shot the ball and just, like, fell into him. And I was like, bro, yeah, that dude. would piss me off if, like, I just slipped. Well, KCP should have did that, try, like, three more times. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he still was a net negative on the game. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, the Miami, he got a way better whistle this time around. Like, way better. And partially, that's, of course, them being more aggressive, getting to the basket. But I thought some calls went their way. And that, that's not me blaming the refs for the win. Mm-hmm. But, like, do, do you remember in the game, there was, like, three possessions where Yo- the fa- the ball went out of bounds and it was Miami Heat ball yeah, with Jokic yeah. just throwing his hands up in the air and all of that shit. Yeah, uh, that somebody on Twitter went back to, like, go through the, the film. of It's unnecessary, but some of them were off the Miami Heat. You could probably I, go I back. I hate when Jokic does that, by the way. That's the that's the major thing with he this game. He looks like a fucking baby doing throwing yeah. a temper tantrum. <laughs> like he got to find a better way to complain at the least because the, the optics of. <laughs> but it even is with just that, disgusting. you know what? I think he's a lot better now than he was like a year or two ago. Yeah, he was no, way he worse. Is, but that gave me PTSD because he used to. Mm. But he did literally. Did. Yeah. <laughs> I, he did have a like he was having some crazy finishes at the rim where you're like he probably could have got that call too because he was literally damn near throwing that. He could have had some offensive fouls too. Yeah, yeah. The shit with Cody Zeller, what? he'd be strong. <laughs> he'd be his pushing ass. his ass out the way. <laughs> I'm 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 taking Nuggets this game three. I'm yeah. thinking they got to They got to come out sharper. And Mike Malone is the guy to be one of the best in the league too. It just like keeping up that intensity. They be literally up third, and he's yelling at them, yelling at them like they down ten. I'm gonna go Heat. I think in this game, I think you're gonna get a much. I think you're gonna get the same great shooting, but I think Caleb Martin also will play better <laughs> in this situation. Did you pull that up? Where you just get that granola bar from? You just had it. Oh, yeah, he's he travel at least some. Um, uh, I know Caleb Martin has struggled in Denver. I feel like that struggling will probably change in Miami. Does it change Why? if Tyler Hero's playing to you? To, uh, that will be very. They say he still has swelling though, so maybe he's he's yeah. like a he's a uh, questionable. Why Caleb Martin right gonna play better all of us? Just because he, I feel like the home court advantage. He know them rims. And game two, and he was like, um, he was. And he's played the first two games with stinkers. I think when you get home and you got that home crowd momentum, well, speed I different shit, about, I, that didn't imply to MPJ in case he. I thought you were gonna say oh, that. Well. The, that's what I'm. That's what I'm. You were setting him up for. His ass to see if he's gonna give me anything besides the fact of being at home <laughs> because we just seen a group of role players not play that well at home. I know. I mean that that statement isn't sub is not Concrete. foolproof. Yeah, it's not foolproof. Role players will still struggle at home sometimes, but more than likely, you expect your guys who aren't your stars to play better at home. He was sick for game two. He was. He almost didn't play. He yep. did hit a big three late, so maybe that was a, a little big confidence boost. I hate the look of his jumper. Um, I love it, does, it. it has that little hitch in it. Eleven point eleven point nine million viewers for game two of the NBA Finals which is identical to the amount of viewers for game two of last year. So anybody who's talking about the ratings of the two smaller markets and all of that, shut up. I know. I seen, exact a, same. I seen a shut post up. where it was just like NBA viewers forced to watch Jokic's greatness and they had to just peel their eyes open. Yeah. Hey. It's been a if great you don't like ball, so just say that, bro. It's That's been a all great you got to do. That's all you got to do is just say that. If you don't like ball, just say that. Cause, Cause, right now, I think through two games, we got one hell of an NBA Finals. Green Sixes fan mad that Jokic doing in the finals like this. Sixes fans mad. 
Um, Bucks fans is mad. Lakers Boston fans. Celtics fans are super mad right now. <laughs> Just ball. They were they were right there. Warriors fans, Celtics, yeah, yeah. Lakers fans for sure. Oh, Lakers fans are really mad right now. Cause y'all were four games away. You were four games away from being here. You know. Yeah, but we didn't. We didn't lose. We got beat. Oh, oh got wow! Beat the fuck out of. Nobody beat. gets swept and say we got beat. We Bro, didn't lose. Mike Malone threw a shot at y'all recently. They did like a. They it was just on br. It was like they handed him a picture or something. He was like, "Oh, this looks familiar. It reminds me of something like a broom or sweep or something." And it was like a picture. I think it was something from the Lakers series. Michael Malone hates the Lakers. <laughs> it's, it's proven. I do too. I think he just hates it because of like. The that narratives that were built, the media attention to the media attention yeah. from the Lakers. Um, I hate whatever. And even yesterday, loves. I'm joking. <laughs> even yesterday, instead of people talking about the NBA Finals, everybody's talking about Kyrie Irving now. If Kyrie <laughs> Irving and LeBron James <laughs> in Dallas. If Jokic was a more just outgoing dude, you think they would probably get more NBA media attention? Well, the, the reality of the situation is, if you aren't the greatest or like close to that, mm-hmm. they're not going to talk. How how much Lakers talk do you see on ESPN and yeah, and we're gu- we're nine. guilty of it too yeah. obviously um, it's popping up probably once an episode a, on TV if I, it if it ain't drama filled then they don't then it's not worth the ratings mm-hmm. so instead of talking about Nikola Jokic's greatness let's talk about LeBron James and them trading everybody to get this new team and oh it's a great story because they made the playoffs and all so it's it's all about ratings at the end of the day mm-hmm. and I think that's the biggest part the biggest fault of NBA uh, media right now is that like nobody's just putting together cool shit it's just like how can we you know what I'm saying? I think the viewers will gravitate to cool shit, personally. What is cool shit? Just fu- fun. I like I've never turned on on these these cable networks and enjoyed myself. It was like they're having a good conversation. They, they're having a great time. It's yelling, it's this and that, it's debate of debate 24-7. It's like it don't have to be like that. You know, you know oh, one of my for the players. Oh no, no, no. One of my favorite shows growing up was Sports Nation. Did y'all did y'all watch Sports Nation growing up? A little no. bit. It was on ESPN two with Colin Cowherd and and I think it was Beetle. But I'm not going to lie. It was a show that if it was on, it was on. But yeah, they had the. Uh, it was like internet like, infused. It was beautiful. And shit. Yeah. Um, it was cool. No, I never seen that. NBA well, Inside it Stuff. It sounded a little familiar, that. but I don't remember that like that. You don't know nothing about no Inside Stuff. I've watched Inside Stuff so much this past two weeks because I'm using this inspiration for my TV show. Quick little shout out. Shout out to him. Mm-hmm. Quick little promotion, too. That's way too back for the that's that 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 show couldn't last in today's. Yeah, because we have the internet. Yeah, and that show came on Saturday. Mm-hmm. I had to be like I, nothing was worse than staying up Friday and waking up, and I saw that fucking um, I missed it. Mm-hmm. Um, I was I was listening to a podcast with him, who was the main host of that throughout the nineties. My man. And he was saying, <laughs> and he was saying it wouldn't exist now, mostly because of the internet. That was a way for them to interview players and show the other side of players that you didn't see because there was no way for us to figure out that um, Larry Johnson likes lizards. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and now, if Larry Johnson wants to put together a fucking YouTube channel for his lizards, he could do it. Like it, it don't take no funding from him. Um, and that's what we're seeing with all these player podcasts and all these players YouTube channels. Like Giannis just announced he owns a candy company. Mm-hmm. He would have to go on inside stuff to talk about that shit beforehand. Now he just has his own YouTube channel for it. So um, it would I don't think it would exist, but I like visually, aesthetically, how inside stuff was. Yeah, because it was very colors. 90s and it yeah. was beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, shout out to my Rashad. He's a guy that don't get it enough. And Will Obey. Shout out to them. Do y'all think there is a way that they can improve TV to where they do bring in the, the demographic that actually would care? Yeah, you bring in us. True. Yeah, it's a fifty-fifty split for me. I I can't sit and just continue to blame TV. I'm also have to blame the people that consume it, because as much as shit that we talk about it, it's a lot of people that sit there and eat it up day in and day out. I think you will never eliminate the old heads from taking that from sitting down on a old people sit down on the TV and watch TV all day, mm-hmm. and they will watch that shit every day, no problem, just because it's part of their routine. Mm-hmm. So that I feel like those ratings. We'll always have those numbers just because they're going to watch it. You're always going to have 30 to 60-year-olds. But the real question when it comes to TV right now is how do you get 11-year-olds and to 24-year-olds to care about linear TV? Mm-hmm. It's hard because they, we got TikTok, we got YouTube. It's hard to care about TV again. And that's the problem that they're having. And that's why ESPN just spent all that money to get Pat McAfee in because Pat McAfee has that demographic and he has them watching two to three-hour live streams every fucking day. So h- here we go. Yeah. yeah. I That's, think, and I think what you're saying is true, P. Because a, a lot of us are influenced by the shit that we watched. So, if you only have seen debate shows when it comes to sports, that is what you're gonna 
do when you're talking sports. Like if I've only seen Stephen A. Smith or I've only seen um, – what was the other guy's name that just lost um, Shannon Sharp? What is his name? Uh, yeah, Skip Bayless. I've seen Skip Bayless yelling at each other about the GOAT. That's kind of what we're going to do because that's all I know in sports media. Mm-hmm. But if we have shows and, and different p- platforms where it's not all that, then I think that we'll have a lot less shitty discourse on Twitter and stuff because now these younger people are growing up outside of Skip Bayless and Stephen A. Smith's. So yeah, and I I feel like debating is such an exhausting thing to do. Constantly. It is. It's I, fun. You know what and, it was and, too? And moderation. Yeah, it's it fun is. when it's not like it feels like it's forced. I feel yeah, like they bro, purposely so fun and, when it's genuine. You yeah. know, it kind of reminds me of, and this is like this is no, no like, I'm not trying to spend say no hate or nothing like because dude is dude is really cool. But it just reminded me of like when we were at our live show and um I forget his name, but a really good guy. He was talking to P about Dame versus Steph Curry. Right. He was like, man. What what can Steph do that Dame can't? Mm-hmm. And then he, you know, P just going casually going back and forth, and he's like, so if Dame was in the playing for the Warriors right now, he would probably do everything he did. It's just like that's the type of stuff that I feel like is a little bit forced because it's just like it's so hypothetical. Mm-hmm. You know, but, it goes back to like yeah. a little bit of bias. It's just like, and it's but just it's not, not like fair. It, yeah, I, but I thought like that was a little different. Shout out to you, though, bro, to, much love. It seemed like it was What's more up, of a sure? conversation versus like a debate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel because like that I is wasn't like going to let it be a, become a debate. But he yeah. was definitely trying to have a debate. He was asking me, <laughs> "What does Steph do better than Dame?" And I feel like that is even in itself. Much respect to him, like you said, that was just stupid. Steph is a better player. What are we talking yeah. about? Like mm-hmm. I, that's the shit that, like you just said, when it's forced. I don't want to have a forced debate with you because you're in love with a player or that's your favorite player. Like I don't want to have that debate, and I, I hate that. That is the mindset of so many fans. Like, I say it all the time. Because Paul George is my favorite, that don't mean he's the best. I am very, very understanding that whoever my favorite is and the best is two different things. Mm -hmm. I am aware that the Knicks aren't the best team. They're just my favorite. That are two extreme different things. And a lot of people don't know how to pick that apart. They think that their favorite equals the best, and that's just not the case. Mm -hmm. That's just not. And if a lot of people understood that, then I think a lot of bullshit will be cool. I'm mm-hmm. not looking at my player or expecting everybody to bow down because I know Paul George is the best player. He's just my favorite. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So, um, Also, I feel like that TV shit is always going to be at a struggle now with the internet, and it's just mostly because you could just find whatever you want. You could find it for one. On YouTube, you can get the little clip-out version if it's a sports show whatever. I can watch Stephen A. Smith do his little rant. I don't got to watch the show. But even in that, just regular TV, watching TV in general is just kind of a little bit outdated to the fact, you I mean, know? Yeah, that's what the, that's what people are fi- finding out. Like, if you look at, like, the NBA ratings that I just mentioned, mm-hmm. the almost 12 million people, that's the people that watch the actual game. But you also got another 50,000 that might have watched YouTube clips or TikToks mm-hmm. or, you know. Don't leave, people are legally streamed. Exactly. So yeah. that doesn't even account for the people that are into the series you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. and the real question is for the nba or for these different companies how do you monetize the people that are actually watching the full game and the reality is it's like youtube ads it's ads on it's like tiktok creator fun Mm -hmm. and they're trying to figure out how do we leverage that because it's it's tough to even i mean and even with that like i think of another thing it's just like people don't sit down and watch tv all day no more like there's times where I might tune into like a show or whatever at eight o'clock because I know and it's a specific reason. But even that, half the shows that I watch, they're on a streaming Stream, platform. Yeah, that's true. I can watch it whenever I want when I get the chance to, versus I have to tune in right then and there. Right. Yeah. Or you, yeah, like you could just watch it later. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the best form of. Like, How do you get live TV to be great again? Bring it to Netflix. Bring it. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I think yeah. that's the be- the best yeah, form. Of, the, the best form of entertainment is 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 that it's not having to fucking break my neck. Mm-hmm. I have to be at eight o'clock watching TBS for my favorite show. Like that is that's and then also not like the way life. It's a thirty minute show. You got ten minutes of commercials. This yeah. is like that's my opportunity. That I might be tuning out versus you know I'm paying for a streaming service that they don't got it. And it's just like I can get my quick twenty minutes in. Did you? Did we all cut the cord? Do anybody here have cable? I don't, I don't have, have cable. cable. I don't, I don't have, have cable. cable. We all have streaming platforms, right? Yep. yep. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah. Well, shit, ain't a problem for me. No, not for us. But I mean, I like for them. them. I, oh yeah, D, I, D Rose in my stream has been telling me you can go to the ESPN uh, website, whatever. You can log in because we have you. I have YouTube TV. You have YouTube. You can use YouTube TV and log in, and it'll be like the exact same mm-hmm. as the game. Mm-hmm. 
Or Hulu too. Yeah, Hulu so, does have live sports. Yeah, that's yeah, what I have. I have Hulu you. live TV. Yeah, so he's saying you can log in with your TV we provider. All, we be on that talking about how behind we is because the YouTube yeah. TV. We be like, damn, this, Kyra, yeah. don't spoil it. Right. But it also <laughs> is cheaper than cable. It is. Yeah. Way cheaper. And I'm okay I'm with being. For 700 channels and I'm only using four. I'm, yeah, I'm definitely okay with being 10 seconds late if it's going to save me X amount of money a month. So, yeah. Uh, they, TV, t- I don't know. The world just ain't the same. Yeah, like, TV's more of a status thing to say that you have a show, or that you're on TV. But in reality, you get you can get way more eyeballs on your shit just by w- TikTok, TikTok and YouTube and stuff. Yeah, I mean, TV might be overrated at this point. Mm-hmm. You 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 got to filter yourself. You got to care about what the network wants you to say because a lot of people don't understand that shit that's tied with TV. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You might just think it's ESPN, but it's a lot of shit that's just tied into it. You, um, you're for, definitely not the head of the creative freedom when you're on for TV. Sure. Would you rather have a and TV show or a Netflix really exclusive? No. It's like Ooh. Disney and all of this shit that what gets did you involved say, Mike? with it. Would you rather have a TV show or a Netflix exclusive? Netflix exclusive. Netflix exclusive. 100%. 100%. Hell yeah. That's a no-brainer. And Netflix just be giving out to motherfuckers, too. <laughs> you need, not that you don't have to work for it. I don't want to discredit no, yeah. people. But like, that don't mean there's a lot, of, a lot of things out there. Right. I grew up watching Netflix exclusive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Brian Gumbel, I think, is on Netflix now. Or he might still be on HBO. Ken Golden has a Netflix what's show. The, what's the guy I've with, been seeing the, uh, the one the guy dude that, that does interview food? on KD about the week. Like, I'm high right now. David oh, Letterman. David Letterman, man, David Letterman, one of there's those. A, there's the food review dude has a show on Netflix now, not Keith Ooh. Lee, but the uh, the ball. Yeah, yeah, he's he got a, he's got one on Netflix now. Then then Kevin Hart pitched some shit to Keith Lee for a streaming show. Uh, maybe because who is Kevin did. Hart signed to a network? Yeah. Kevin Hart has net right. Kevin Hart signed to something. Hart something right? I Hart. No, I'm just talking shit. Um, I Heart Radio. That's not him. I just know he did have Keith Lee come review his restaurant. I'm like, that's not him. Duh. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But yeah, no, the Netflix exclusive, because I I feel like you just have a lot more creative freedom. Mm -hmm. Of course, we ain't been in those meetings to know. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, on on TV, you got your own like network that you got to abide by, but also like the network of TV in general. Mm -hmm. What is it? The The Nielsen, whatever. The FD, the FD. Not FDC. the F- FDA is the F- FDC? food something. <laughs> Some, uh, FTC. FTC. I like getting. I didn't know it from Family Guy. FTC. I like getting Light on team. here and you know, like talking to D Rose, talking to Isaiah, to talking to Anthony Edwards. I like getting them loose and being like, man, I bust your ass. Right. I couldn't say that on ESPN at all. He oh, Kevin Hart owns but a part of Peacock. What is his Peacock. shit called? His shit has hearts. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, that's where his um laugh out loud is where he has his coldest ball show. He has a stand up. He has a stand up called Laugh Out Loud, right? Was it Laugh? All oh, Laugh in My Pain, yeah. Shout out to Kevin Hart. Coming to the podcast, Kevin. But yeah, I like to yeah, talk to people and get people. He, he just, just did a podcast run, him, bro. Yeah, with Logan Paul. He was on Logan Paul's. He was on. Um, he was on Jason Sudeikis' show, show, which I, I ain't watched, but I saw a clip of that was funny. Um, hey, more basketball stuff um, outside of the NBA Finals. At different points, Zion refused to work with the VP of Player Care and Performance, Aaron Nelson. <clears throat> Brandon Ingram has sometimes seemed unwilling to play through minor discomfort to the point where some of his teammates have become frustrated with him over the past two years. Yes, straight up to the next. Zion missed the final 45 games of last season with a, a strained hamstring, um, but he wasn't the only key Pelican piece to miss extended period of time. Brandon Ingram set out 29 consecutive games with the injury the team described as a left toe contusion. Ingram Kicked the back of the of a Memphis Grizzlies player's foot in November, two days after the injury. The Pelicans coach Willie Green said Ingram was day to day. Days turned into weeks, weeks turned into months, and Ingram didn't play until January 25th, exactly two months after hurting his toe. During the time, there was significant frustration in the Pelicans organization with Ingram's extended absence. Several players felt like he was capable of playing. NBA Insider was shocked when Nelson was informed that he would no longer be in charge of the play, of the Pelicans' player care and performance team. Nelson and Griffin were friends dating back to the time of the Suns, and Griffin gave Nelson a huge amount of power with the Pelicans. Other NBA sources wonder if Nelson was being scapegoated for Zion and Ingram's shortcomings as unreliable stars. I'm gonna clap it up for my good friend KB. Thank you. Me and you, me and you struggle to read, and you just did a great job. Thank right you. There. Thank you. I appreciate that. But uh-huh. then, uh, I wish you could you could tell like the whole get the whole stats of when they've been playing together versus just this year, because mm-hmm. I think if you look at that, it might be more so if you can look at that panic button. But it's just it's still that that you want them to play together. I think you've seen them play like play Zion played a lot of good ball last season. 
so did Brandon Ingram. You want that together, but it's also you got to look at that as a whole yeah. and think, is it time to panic and probably trade most likely Brandon Ingram rather than Zion? Well, they played 200 minutes together this season, which mm-hmm. is nothing. nothing. Nothing for your two star players. Um, and yeah, I mean, the the Nelson guy, when he got hired to the Pelicans, it was like, oh, shit, we got the best in the game on our staff. And, and you know, Zion's got his shit with the health. And if there's anybody that's going to get Zion good, it's going to be Nelson. And then they got his ass out of there because apparently, I mean, maybe he escaped. Gold. I'm not in the locker room. We're not in the locker room to know. That's a tough test. The challenge it's a, Zion. It's a tough one. And I didn't even think about Brandon Ingram. Like, I feel like because the Pelicans are just one of the 30 teams and they're not one of the prominent, prominent teams, a lot of the stuff that to be going on in this kind of slipped under the rug. I didn't even realize that he missed two months. I didn't like, either. I mean, I, on a day-to-day basis, yeah, Brandon Ingram's not playing. But I didn't realize that it was a toe contusion. Yeah, and Brandon Ingram is – like we know him as one of those dudes that love the game of basketball. It's kind of weird seeing that like he don't want to play through minor stuff, but that's also like to each his own. Like we don't know what that pain is or what he's actually going through, but usually, you know, Hoopers try to go through that. Um I know people that don't like to perform mm-hmm. unless they're able to perform to their highest abilities. Yeah. yeah. Um and in the NBA, I you can't really you can't really do that. I'm not saying that Brandon is one of those dudes, mm-hmm. but in the NBA you can't really do that. Um, no, especially sure. when your team is like the two seed when you're healthy, and then when you come back, we're fucking fighting for a playing spot. Yeah, I think this kind of goes to what C.J. McCollum said at the end of the season. I had to look it up because I couldn't remember exactly, but he said, for us to be successful in the future, we need to be able to play together. Mm, we need our best players to be on the court. We need to play extensive minutes together, especially in meaningful games to showcase what we have to offer. For us to contend for a championship – and contend for a playoff run, and that's what it takes. That's what it's going to take. That's that's funny because when he said that, everybody pointed immediately at Zion. Zion but it was actually to Brandon Ingram. Too. Probably both. I mean, yeah, it's, both. To both. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I think there's nothing that I like. It don't matter what sports. Shit could be reading, could be writing. Like reps has got to be like the most important thing, and so in, in almost anything is reps. And regardless, like them being on the court and getting those minutes together. It's no doubt that didn't like it played a factor into them, you know, not perform or not getting to where they wanted to be in the season. He also said that he could have easily taken the way out um, during the season and gotten surgery, but he's not that type of player. Mm-hmm. And um, and even though it affected my performance, I just went out and competed the best I can. Yeah, and I'm trying to lead by example. That shit is literally like kind of like what we was playing off of. It's one of the other. It's like it's two those two types of players that one that wants to do that. The one that's gonna go through like the hundred percent route. I feel like more than often we see the players like CJ McCollum that kind of just battle through it. I'm gonna take bi. I'm gonna take bi word for it. he don't have the history. You know, maybe his toe shit just turned into something. You know, a little bit more. You know, what I'm saying I, he's never been the guy that's just missing games. That's what I'm. Yeah, missing. that's what I'm saying. So I'm gonna kind of give him the benefit of the doubt now. If the same shit happen next year, <laughs> then I'm gonna probably look a little closer at him. That's but, the evolution know. of this game, man. They losing that look. <laughs> oh man, they losing. You gotta that get love. you a spot on ESPN with that take. <laughs> <laughs> but I am looking at Zion a little bit more closer because I mean, you could say I. I don't even understand what that would do. If they were like, oh, we're going to trade Brandon Ingram because he didn't want to play 29 more games, Mm -hmm. you still weren't going to have Zion. Yeah. Zion is the common denominator for the past I don't know how many years, and I'm not trying to pile up on him or act like he's faking or anything, but if you're talking about making a move because somebody isn't playing, I don't know what trading anybody would do if Zion's not going to be there. Anything you do is is going to be with the idea of him playing. So trading Brandon Ingram – what is that doing if Zion's still not going to be playing? Nothing. It just don't make no fucking sense. So, um, but, but if they wanted to trade Brandon Ingram, I, as a Nick fan, he can come and hoop with us all he want. It, you're just throwing that out Gee, there. Yeah, Tom Thibodeau have him playing on three broken toes. Yeah, on. <laughs> Didn't he, uh, Zion, um, wasn't he supposed to come back and then he had like another problem or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah See, that's he played that, 29 games last just year. Just after hearing that shit with Zoe, like I, I do not want to hear no more about these knee injuries. That was, yeah. That's the scariest thing. Funny thing is, they were all on the same team together two years ago. Oh, my God. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. They was hooping, too. That team looked really good. Looking back on it, if everything went perfectly, sure. that team could have been really – I mean, it was already fun, mm-hmm. but they were they were so many games in that season. I remember making videos about them blowing 10-point leads in the fourth quarter. It's like, damn, something got to give. And then eventually they fired the coach, um, and they brought in Willie Green. And Willie Green's been cool, but he obviously – He needs players to be healthy. Yeah, he needs players to get healthy. Um, so we'll see what that looks like. Hopefully they don't end up – because I remember during the season they were talking about firing him. Like it was rumors of him getting fired. I'm just like, how can you fire someone who's never had – who hasn't had their best players? Mm-hmm. Really? I mean, I think if Willie Green gets fired, he's getting picked up immediately. Yeah. He, he's he's one he's one of those dudes that like I, – I can't look at 
Name three teams Willie Green played for. Uh, Willie Green played for the Clippers. The Clippers, yeah. The Horn- Hornets slash Hornets. <clears throat> what? The Horn. I was gonna say Hornets slash Pelicans, but I think he played for the Hornets. Um, and then Willie Green. You said Clippers. Willie yeah. Green also played for. Um, Most prominent. Willie Green also played for the Detroit Pistons. Mm. Allen Maybe. Iverson, Philadelphia 76ers. No. I thought that's how people knew Willie Green. I know Willie Green from playing with Chris Paul. Yeah, I only the remember them in the Clippers. Is, the Clippers is <laughs> way, it's just, that's just, that's the last version of Willie Green. Well, yeah, the Clippers try to get every fucking old shooter they can get for them wing spots. But I forgot some yeah. of y'all started watching basketball in 2014. He yep. played. He played one up on, season uh, with Chris Paul. <laughs> I grew up. <laughs> what did they say earlier, <laughs> bro? Who did they say in the chat? You grew up on who? It was like a play that came out like two, three years. <laughs> it's like you grew up on Donovan Mitchell or something. It was oh, something man. along those lines. <laughs> I can't remember who. You, the fuck you ain't growing world. up then. You still growing. <laughs> uh, Paige also played for the same for six years. I grew up on Lamelo Ball. We missed you uh, <laughs> Sunday, KB. Oh, I was pissed that y'all went on Sunday. Because I was, I wasn't in town to go. Bro, you would have been fucking crying. I know. That's what the stories that I've already heard makes me wish I was there. But yeah. they was asking in the chat to, to your th- thoughts on the, the hoop session. What are your thoughts? Because we haven't heard everybody except you and John, Kyra, me, and Mike talked. But um, I mean, it was it was all right. We had one good game as a team. The other two, we got a got we kind of got the second game. The one we lost after we won. Thought that one was a little underwhelming. They they decided that they were just not going to guard Kyron and John. <laughs> but uh, I do feel like I, I could have played better in that last game as well. Uh, the first How so g- could you play better? Damn. I could have. I should have just played. Like that's I, an easy way. I should have just played like I played in the, fr- in the game we won where I was posting up. But then I got tired and I didn't feel like being down there banging no more. <laughs> Bro. This is why we might have to start bringing the camera to the damn court, bro. The tad thing I understand, that nigga was sitting in the corner, bro. I was. Like, that motherfucker yeah, was I'm P.J. Tucker. Yeah, I'm surprised you said Ka- Ka- Kyron and John. They weren't guarding you either, bro. They weren't guarding you either. And Unless then Mike, I posted Mike up. threw up. I heard that. Oh, yeah, Mike yeah. threw up, so he left me. And now I'm just like, I don't know what the fuck to do. Would you just had a crazy night before? Yeah. yeah. I was a little tad, too. I... I threw up, came back, and I think I immediately hit a three. You, be, you better than me. If I'm throwing up, I'm going to fuck home. I feel, <laughs> I'm the, well, at least for me, when I throw up, I be immediately feeling better because whatever I did throw up, it's just out it's of my that, system. Yeah. Got it all. That's how I be feeling too. Unless I'm I like, know how you be like feeling. sick. <laughs> After what happened in the behind the scenes, I know exactly how you be feeling when it comes to bodily fluids. Who? Um, Derek. Oh, oh, no, yeah. No, I forgot about it that. Was, it, it was it was a cool hoop session. I, I like the first two games we played for sure. Even that first one we lost, I felt like we had a little bit more fight. It's just that John, he throws the ball. He don't shoot it. Kyron is just funny. I'm trying to ice was on Kyron there? behind me. Yes. Okay. Mason he didn't. He didn't play on our team. Yeah. Uh, which, if we would have had Mason, we might have been a little more decent. <laughs> and then Derek, we come into the, I come into the gym, and he told Mike he want to play Draymond Green. He want to be Draymond Green today. And I'm just like, that. that's why we be losing. Because we too old to come What in. made you say that, by the way? I don't know. I just That should have told know. me everything I needed to know, how that day was going to go. My dude, did you see anybody bigger than him on the floor? There never is going to be. <laughs> But he need to be Draymond. Do you understand? Draymond is an undersized, power forward that's like 6'6". Who's guarding perimeter, who's creating shots, who's bringing the ball up. I tell D. Mills one time to bring the ball up, nigga throw it at my head. And go out <laughs> oh, I remember that, bro. <laughs> and I'm like, I just told you to bring it up. So when you say you want to be Draymond, how did, how did you envision that? I just envisioned myself setting screens for everybody. And slipping and... Yeah, and passing the ball. So, but so he don't so slip. So, he don't so, slip. So he fucking pop. He so pop. So bonus. He pops, bro. So Sabon, yeah, ninety percent of the time you he's pop. popping. <laughs> and he didn't, bro. He took more jump shots than interior. How shots. many jump shots you hit yesterday? None. <laughs> or, or this Sunday? But he kept None. Shooting them, bitch. The game we won, KB. We did I a pick and roll. He scored. I said, okay, we're gonna do that every time, and we're gonna win this game. He scored three straight layups. 
the fourth time we did it, he did a fadeaway on a smaller guy because they switched it <laughs> and it hit the side of the rim. Yeah, no, I'm like, it's like at the side what? of the backboard, not side of the yeah, rim. Side of the backboard. Yeah, that's what, yeah, side of. The, so if you have a mismatch that you can score three layups on, what in your brain says fadeaway? <laughs> And you can't. And I'm tired of the tiredness <laughs> excuse because you don't do shit. Hey, you don't you, have you guard anybody that's a t- a top caliber. Mm-hmm. On offense, all you have to do is screen and really roll. And not ninety percent of the time, you pop. So if I don't understand where that energy is going, the court ain't that fucking big because I'm not in shape either. I'm not in basketball shape. My damn self. None of us really are. Shit. If Kyrie can get up and down, your ass can get up and down because Kyrie is probably in the worst shape. <laughs> And everybody. For real. John ain't hooped in two years, bro. And John led us in rebound. That makes sense. <laughs> Offensive rebound. Offensive rebound. That makes sense. Offensive no, that makes sense. Offensive rebound. If it was one thing John Wait, was going to no, do no, no. Did you day, hear 2P? Because um, the guys that, when we walked in, the guys that was kind of hooping around, like I seen them before. I told D-Mills, like, it should be a good, like, good fun game because they be hooping. D-Mills is like, oh, I know that tall dude. I played with him at, at blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, shit. You 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 should have been killing him, bro. Which he ain't had shit to you. The other the other light skinned dude. Want us, yeah. Oh, uh, you know him? Yeah, we used to hoop together. Oh, uh, but you know what? Too there was yeah, another. Y'all ass ain't say shit to each other <laughs> for real. Oh, yeah, At the yeah. beginning, we dapped up. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> you know what? So, like, he was telling me he went to U of I. Like we was talking during the game. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> you know what was funny as hell, bro? Kyran, I think he got a rebound. He looked around, threw that motherfucker right to the other team. Cause like oh, he said, yeah. dude was a tall, light skinned dude. He thought that he motherfucker thought was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nigga don't look. He shit don't look like shit like him, bro. He, he was just tall like and light. He just saw a light skinned dude and just do it. it. Nigga don't look. I was shit. like, that's what happened when you panicking. He's like, no, no. I think John like, did just that the too. Where he went to the basket and he panicked and he just, bro. Oh, I got a KB. I got a steal, bro. I got a steal. And John is kind of like cut into the rim. I pass him the ball. He do a little weird Euro step but gather. He he like he's got the ball. He don't know what to do. So he put that motherfucker behind it, like <laughs> go like this and just throw it above his head. <laughs> did he what he did he say after? It. No, he just threw he it in said, the city of me and Mike. He, he just said threw it up. <laughs> He said, I knew somebody was gonna be over there. <laughs> That shit was so funny, bro. It's funny because he's rolled what an hour and a half. Yeah. And y'all say he didn't score at all in a day. <laughs> Wait, I don't know. He did. He took a decent amount of shots too. Yeah, right to the near the rim. And then they, they double team, and he like this, and I'm like, I can't throw this. <laughs> and then a couple of times, like, fuck it, it's gone. I did, it. I did, and I throw that one time, and that motherfucker hit. He was like on the baseline he with like a ten foot some. jumper, and he bricked that. Oh, shit Damn. was crazy. He might have been shooting with both hands, KB. John, did, he don't jump when he shoot. He don't. He got like this much lift on his jump. But you know what? what? It was good to see he had one possession where he was guarding on ball because that was all a defender. I don't think he got the steal, he but he was it. hounded, yeah. bro. He was ball hard. I'm, like, I'm like, why you don't guard the nigga like that every time? <laughs> that was one thing about John growing up. He had all the athletic tools except jumping. Yeah, he not he not he afraid just, to hack. He was just a hack. That's he really didn't, what it was. Yeah, he just reached, bro. The nigga act like he playing 2K. He just a hack, bro. Kyron had a move. He took it off the dribble. Oh, Kyron had some nice damn. moves. I, I, damn. I know we meme Kyron, bro. When we were growing up, Kyron was nice. Oh, he was? Kyron's actually, like, I'm, I'm talking fifth grade. Oh. Kyron was nice. Like in high school or something. No, I can't. I wasn't there for high yeah, school. Then he shot a shot. He said, you got to step on that. Step on, step up on that, my boy. And it rolled out. Though. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. <laughs> it looked good, though. And then it came out. I'm like, oh, my God. That's you give a talking shit before your shot go down. Bro, you gotta, another you thing that you that, you would have been dead laughing at, bro. This is when we was sitting on the like we was sitting out. I think he was he was fighting for a rebound or some shit, and all you hear is a loud ass fucking thud. Mason had fell on the ground, bro. <laughs> and he was talking to me because like he had came he had came by uh, my crib about the words, and he was telling me he's like, yeah, I thought he's about to he's like I was about to land on my ankle. But I was just like, nah, like I'm just gonna tr- bail out. But he's like, I also got pushed at the same time. Cause dude, when I got up, he is like, you good, bro? Like my bad, my bad. But that shit was so fucking loud, bro. Uh, that, that shit, that was that was one of the best and worst hoop days ever. Cause if we just should have been thrashing that competition, man. For man, real, if we, dude, this why, this Kevin, why I be saying I can't AKB, say anything. Kevin Durant, Devin Booker against Denver, me and Mike. I I, I want to say on a podcast, Mike was export Mike on Sunday. I felt like every time I drove, 
He was out there making shots. He was making the shots. Timely side. We'd be losing 11 to 7. I'd be like, fuck, we need a bucket. Try to drive, kick it to Mike. He making it. I'm like, let's, let's go, Mike. Come on. Uh, come on. It was that, that second game we had. I had a tough little reverse layup. And oh, then I yeah, think I tied yeah. it up. That and the next flexed. play, the next play, P game that bitch. I'm <laughs> like, oh, we lit in this hole. What you finna say there? I don't um we have we're gonna have to call up IT. Yeah, we would we should have ran that court, bro. We should have ran that court. We should, I'm looking and I'm looking at my big fella too. I'm looking, I ain't I ain't I ain't gonna, uh, I ain't yeah, gonna go I, hard. I said I'm done with those conversations. Oh yeah, I'm I not see I'm no not, more TTW I'm clips, P and Mike. Bro, this is another thing I, basketball. We gotta play more often. Cause I feel like D Mills be trying to make the right moves. But I don't be knowing how aggressive he's gonna be because sometimes I come off the screen. He gonna do a little pop. Sometimes I, I'm trying to go to the basket. This nigga clearing his man out the way. He already not throwing the ball, and it's a little off him. And you know he's he not. Need to, he needs to accept the basketball player that he is. Going into the gym and saying I'm being Draymond Green is at this point it's impossible for Derek to do. Who is somebody better than Draymond Green? You should be D Mills because Draymond is Draymond not Draymond Green is an elite defender. You don't block shots. <laughs> You don't Bro, the one play I've proved me where that yo yo up. man got an offensive rebound when we needed a critical we stop. Up that whole possession. We need, your man just literally and walked to the rim, got, got a rebound. Got and I was like, no. He did miss the layup. Though. I think he no, no he, he made, made it. That. I'm pretty sure he might have even tipped it in because it was wide open. Yeah, play two. On the KB don't play two K that much. He man. know though. When you lock up and somehow the CPU yeah. just move and they yeah. give up the last shot right before the <laughs> fucking shot clock. And it's like, oh, my gosh, we just played 23 seconds of amazing defense for that shit. Yeah. No, yeah, you just got to accept the player who you is. Drake, you said you wanted to play, make, and rim protect when I asked you. And I've never in my history of who I barely you, bring the ball up. Seen you, two, seen you do those two things. I've never seen you make a play. And rim protection is just, we always talked about that for years. For you to be as big as you are, you don't block shots. So you walked in and said, I'm going to be Draymond Green. I was like, huh? What the fuck? You are like, at your best, I'm going to say Sabonis. Yeah. If, like you want, if you ever wanted to play make, you would be like you a are, Sabonis. You, you should, in theory, be a bruiser. Cause in, in theory. I, in theory. Because honestly, you don't even got to exert that much energy. But I'm just saying, as somebody that's tried to guard you before, you put that body on and that shit wearing the nigga You down. didn't hear that part. We was walking off the court and Mike was like, if d is on the other team, he'd be playing a lot much more harder. If he was, he would have. You would have probably the, killed us, which bro. is the weirdest shit I can never get over. I like, I am going at a stranger way harder than I'm going at my friend. We should test the next time we go. Yeah, yeah. We should have had Mason and put you on another team. Then nigga we Mills is gonna be never. Right, nigga, bro, nigga, almost on my ACL. He posted me up. <laughs> He did that to one dude. One dude came in and fucked his Oh, man yeah, up. bro. He I'm talking like, about I, games with you, D. Mills. He <laughs> said, I, I went, when I foul, you don't say nothing. Very oh, next yeah. play, I'm knowing D. Mills going to get back on the D. block. D. Mills you know, on the corner. In the corner. In the oh, corner. Spotted man, up like Max Truth. <laughs> dude, I'm fucking put the fear of God in D. Mills. We lost. He, he ain't even finna play no more. That was crazy because I didn't even do anything. You did it. That motherfucker. I swear, so me and Pete looked at each other. We was like, damn. If if I fucking it up and he said that, I'm going back because I got him. He defeated. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he don't even want to guard me no more. I'm going right back at him. And we six deep. We ain't finna let nobody do no shit to you. We gonna de-escalate it before anything happen. And if it have to come to a point we where somebody needs nigga, no can't, nigga mad because he can't guard you. Yeah. Nigga better hit that weight room. It's one. Ten feet away. And what, blew, <laughs> what blew my mind, he talking about, I'm going to foul you. Bro, every time D Mills touch the ball, he's getting fouled. He's too big for any of y'all to handle. So I just don't call it. We might need you to call him if you're going to be playing the way you is, though. Get those extra possessions. Yes, bro, because you, 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 you need a constant. You know what I would say for you to work on, bro? You need to work on gathering the damn ball. He is crazy. Work on gathering the ball, bro. He had times where he... He's not working on shit. He ripped through. He'll have a layup, but I don't think he got full control of the ball. Nigga be airballing or just hitting all backboard on yeah, a layup. I don't, I don't have that. You got to have some body used control. used to be able to drive and get to the basket, but now it's just kind of like... It's so much rust. And you too big. You might as well just go ahead, keep the ball high, and just finish strong up top. I think I just think you have a lot more energy if you post it up and set screens. But you're trying to shoot them jump shots. You're trying to do shit that ain't in your game. <laughs> I even tell you that when you be playing Mike one on one. I told you last time we was hooping. Nigga was hooping against KD. Take a fadeaway. Mid range shot that you shot. That is that's that's not a shot for you. That is not. You a catch and shoot guy, but that whole you off balance and shit shoot, go balance off. One of the videos. Did he hit all? Did you hit all backboard on Sunday in one shot? 
<laughs> yes. Yesterday? Maybe. <laughs> on Sunday. Know. Yeah, he did. He did. But I mean, I, I know I know most of the shots. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did hit one off the side of the back. Both of them were just short as fuck. They were just hitting the front of the rim. I know. What what you asking? He's like, if Cody Zeller takes seven threes, you'll be mad at him. I, I was just telling him, like, if a play, if a <laughs> That's crazy. Because D-Mills can hit him, but that's not your strong we suit. We on the sideline. I'm like, D-Mills, let's just think about this for one second. You made zero perimeter shots, but you shot probably 80 to 75% on the interior. The math tells me, the analytics <laughs> say you should probably go your ass to the inside, right? Like, duh. It's, he tells me, KB, I just felt like shooting today. <laughs> So I'm like, oh, yeah. We can go next Sunday, too. I, 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 I'm not going back for that. I'll go, but I, for that, I need niggas to tell me that they're not coming in there talking about, I felt like shit. No, today. but this is this is the worst part of it, KB. I, I think it's screen short. They put in the chat. d put on his IG story. I'm getting in my bag today. Yeah, so I'm right. in my bag I'm today. I'm in my bag today. I'm that was, my bag. I had literally posted that before we even started hooping. Right. You got to post that shit after no, you hooping from that, though, But if you in the gym saying, I'm in my bag today. You got to come with it. You can't do yeah. that and then say, I feel like shooting. So even though I'm, I'm 0 for 15, I'm going to shoot 17 more shots from the perimeter this game. I'm telling my, set, uh, post up, D-Mills, you got a mismatch. No, I'm, I'm going to set a screen. Oh, my fucking God. For the pop. For the pop. I don't know, man. Hey, I'll get into it, though. Um, you told us you didn't want to be number one option. We don't want you to be number one option either. But there's nothing you're going to be able to tell us to where we're not going to expect for you to rebound and score inside. There's nothing. You can't tell. You saying I don't want to be the number one option does not just uh, remove the fact that you're 6'4", 6'3", 280, and the biggest dude in the court, so you should clean the glass. I know you be saying certain things to take off some pressure, but no ma- I'm just letting you know, no matter who you play with, where you're playing, and what your attitude is, you're going to be looked at to at least rebound the ball and make inside shots. No, nah, the one offensive rebound he had was crazy, bro. Bro, KB. KB, they still look like he had hustle rebound the Hall of Fame. <laughs> bro. He vacuumed them up. He climbed up the ladder, vacuumed what? it up. And, <laughs> and that was the first thing of the game, and he, he took the rest of the game. <laughs> <laughs> no exaggeration. Our fr- that was the first point. We, the fr- yeah. we checked it up after we won. We shot. He one hand grabbed it, moved them niggas out the way, <laughs> went up and All one motion gave me. And the rest of the game, <laughs> he didn't score or rebound. John went to the side like, I don't think d has got a rebound. I was like, he got that first one. He was like, oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, we got to look at you crazy more. when you like, where you at? I'm, I'm tired. I was tired. <laughs> I was tired. I don't know. I felt like shoot today. I'll be better Sunday. Damn, y'all de- declaring that going back on Sunday? Come on, let's go. If he's telling me he's <coughs> going to be better, cool. Because I feel like as long as we got us three, mm. well, our fourth is KB we guess. <laughs> or at least KB ain't I'm going to be better than John. Or we got Kyron. I feel like we can beat anybody. That's why I was geeked. I'm like, as long as we got me, Mike, and D-Mills, we good. Kyron had a nice little matchup, bro. You should have seen. Kyron had a dude that played exactly like him on no, him. Bro. No, don't disrespect Kyron like that. Bro. Are you talking about the one dude that, that with the red shirt? shirt? Yeah. Don't Kyron better than him, bro. Don't do dude that. ain't do nothing but he's he... a referee. He was a ref. <laughs> yeah, you really won't even recognize that he's on the court. He's a fucking ref, man. Damn. I, yeah, he still got bounce. <laughs> Nigga, thirty feet away from the play. <laughs> he's a ref. <laughs> Oh. That shit was crazy. All we need you to be is Jock Landale, man. Don't be Aiden. And I told y'all. And we need you to be Landry Shaman. I told y'all they was going to trade his ass. Y'all saw that report? All about Aiden? It's expected yeah. for him to get traded. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I got some stuff that we could continue on. Um, 2023 FIBA Basketball World Cup is this year. Uh, starting off in August, I Let's guess. Let's guess the players. We got Brunson. Okay, Brunson is, is Austin is, Reeves. Austin Reeves and Ingram are both on the roster. Jaron Jackson Jr. Jaron Jackson Jr. Announced, um, um, it was a random ass guy. I think the random dude out of here, no disrespect, is Austin. <laughs> it's Austin Reeves. <laughs> oh, okay. Maybe it was Austin Reeves. Uh, you got Mikael Bridges, Anthony Edwards, Tyrese Halliburton, and Bo- Bobby Portis is also Bobby a random. Portis. Oh, Bobby, random. Random. Bobby Portis. Uh, that's all the people that have committed so far. Um, which is a that's a decent roster. Yeah. You know, the FIBA don't have uh three second in the paint, so Jaron Jackson Jr. is a fucking feast. He's gotta not foul. Um and this is the Anthony first Edwards in that element is gonna be so fun. This is gonna be the first time they've been able to play um since the last time. Of course. That what the fuck? Uh they got seventh place. USA got seventh place the last time. 
Mm-hmm. We not doing that again. You team mm-hmm. team states. Team states. You see that roster? And this is only the young dudes. Everybody's assuming that one of the star older dudes are gonna commit to. Is it Dame? Is it one of those type of dudes? We'll see. Dame do like to play for his country. Dame just like to play basketball. Yeah. In general. Um We gotta yeah, we gotta bring out our, our big guns, man. And you know those FIBA, FIBA things, they be having shooters at the bigs, and we got two of the best three point shooting bigs in ball committed to the team. Don't get me wrong, I love the Olympics, but I like the FIBA shit too. No, yeah, it'd be fun. It's a twelve hour difference between the Philippines, which where they'll be playing for at least the first round, and us. So They're the games are six a.m., seven a.m. You get to see like random guys who maybe don't go off in the NBA go off in the FIBA, like Patty Mills. One year they had yeah. like Rudy Gay, Lamar Odom. But I'll never forget when Kenneth Faree was out there Kenneth killing. Kenneth Faree yeah. was people out there killing. I Kenneth thought he was going to come Reed out to take over. The I league. thought he was going to have a jump the next season. Yeah, he was out about two years later. <laughs> then it was a year where it was like Derrick Rose, yeah. Steph. He Curry. came back for a little bit. That Houston stint looked like he he had some, but then he he was shooting going three. again. He yeah. was going again. Uh, the Kyrie Irving stuff we mentioned it earlier in the show, but Kyrie Irving has reached out to Lakers star LeBron James and attempts to see if James would come to Dallas. That's crazy how that sort of conversation gets leaked. This this to me yeah. is Kyrie letting and everybody it's from know. Charm, so it's like you know it this ain't, is Kyrie you know. saying that he's staying in Dallas. Yeah, that's what I took this as. Yeah. Hey LeBron, I can't come to LA. But because we're friends, you can come to Dallas, and he knows damn well Brown ain't finna do that. This is his way of saying he's going back to Dallas. And it's kind of funny because, like, if I'm the Lakers, the last thing I want to trade him to is Dallas because package-wise, they don't really have shit they that I want. Shit. And But I also do understand player empowerment. If LeBron wants to go to Dallas, they're going to send him to Dallas. You don't want to be the only team in LeBron's career to trade him. You don't want to – you you because that, that's just admitting that you failed him. Even though you got a champion – you got one championship so far. You that's don't. great. You don't. You don't. As a basketball fan, I also don't want to see him and Luca together. Yeah, I'm always iffy about two ball dominant players playing together. Two. Kyrie's on that roster too, my guy. Oh yeah, but Kyrie's shown that he has the ability to play off the ball very well. Yeah, he did. His you shot. Hey, and I think you don't want to. And I'm not even. I'm kind of like ready for just like that post. Just rather ready for the rebuild phase at this point of the Lakers. I've been saying what? I'm ready. It's. I don't. This is mind blowing to me. I I you have that. arguably the greatest player in the history of basketball on your team, and though he's thirty eight, he ain't back in twenty eleven. He's still fucking amazing, and you're ready to rebuild, bro. I would kill a motherfucker to have LeBron on my roster right now. I, I'm excited for the rebuild. I'm excited for when it gets That's to that insane. point. I think y'all. Are, but do you understand <laughs> that your draft capital is not crazy for the rebuilds? Is like, hey, I think y'all have like one. Two, one or two you traded picks. one to get the, the D'Angelo Russell deal to happen. Yeah. You still got mm-hmm. one of them left. I remember if it's 2027 or 2029. Yeah. Bro, y'all were four games away from the finals this year. Are you trying to rebuild? I have to say that I'm excited for it. I'm not, I'm being, I, let me try to rephrase it. Like I said, I'm excited for it because I feel like it's just getting to that point in time. Yes, no team has ever traded LeBron. No team has also had him at this type of age going through this type of things. Obviously, I feel like LeBron is going to be more of a personal decision wherever he goes. It's, it's you know what I'm LeBron hearing right game. now? What? You take LeBron ass for granted. That's what's I'm not happening. taking LeBron That's for granted. That's what's happening right now. You have fucking LeBron. I, bro, he averaged 30 this year. I was, he averaged this 30. This is what I said when I was telling people this too. Is It's it's hard because I don't, as a basketball fan, I don't want to see LeBron, first of all, retire or just do whatever. And I love having my team. But it's also, as an NBA fan, as just a Laker fan, I'm just ready for the next step. I don't. Really feel like this shit is gonna go down how we think it is. So you're gonna so you another trade, year. So you'll be down to trade both. That's both. what a rebuild has to. You can't. Yeah, you would have to come back to. But it. my, I, you do you understand what I'm saying? Three years ago, you won an NBA championship, right? Mm-hmm. This year, you were in the conference finals. I know those two years in the middle were shit because you were a playing team and then lost in the first round. But more more times than not, or close to y'all have been a competent, good team. You're four games away, and this is a team. It this was. is a team that y'all pieced together in February. It was. It was. <laughs> I. This is not the way. I think to win. y'all are more so together ready teams for each year. It's just really not. I just want to remind you what a rebuild is, because before you drafted Brandon Ingram, Julius Randle, Alonzo Ball, y'all are fucking awful. It was Kendall Marshall. It was Robert Sacre. You know, it was awful. I remember those days. Xavier I remember Henry. those days. <laughs> I don't I, like going through that a second time in ten mm-hmm. years when you had LeBron. Feels kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. If you were okay, let's say the Lakers say, you know what, LeBron is 30, 38. Mm-hmm. He's he's questioning whether or not he want to retire. Let's let's trade him away. Is the Dallas Mavericks the, the, the package no, they're that not, you They're look? not the damn. They're not the package at all. Because well, e- even it, though Bron is arguably the greatest of all time, mm-hmm. he is thirty eight, and then going into the last year of his deal, correct? Yep. The value that you're getting for Bron is not about to be what Kevin Durant just got. 
It no, for sure. For sure. I'm just saying I'm a, I'm excited for whatever the new look Lakers is when it comes to that time. I understand that there it's LeBron James. You know, it's a lot that comes with it. But I'm just saying as a as an NBA, as a Laker fan, I'm just excited to see what that is. Is this not crazy to anybody else? I, I'm just here. I'm just, shocked to hear him say. I'm kind of right. Just, I feel like that's not the first time it, I said it's that. It's nut shit. So I'm just on my phone chilling. Were you you said that they should trade LeBron in 2020 before y'all win a championship? He did. That was yeah, on the po- clips. Has it clips? Clips has it. Um, that Wait, was the year y'all won because they weren't as good as he thought they were going to be. That's crazy. And then they went to the bubble and won the championship. So it's, it don't matter, you know. But I think that in general, fan, fans in general are so hyper focused on like the idea of something new that they can't look in the mirror and say like, oh, shit, we got something nice. Yeah, you know at least y'all did win it. You could say that. It's not like this whole. Oh, trust me. I, I talk about that fucking bubble. Small, very small. <laughs> true. Very smaller scale. When the Bulls decided to hit their complete rebuild and traded Jimmy Butler away for Larry Marketing and Chris Dunn and stuff, I was sad, but I was ecstatic. Mm-hmm. Let's go rebuild. We'll be back at Young six. me was sad because I didn't understand. We love that. Jimmy Butler. Yeah, yeah. But like in general, you're like, okay, young draft capital, boom, we hit some draft picks. We right back here in four years. Mike, we've been in the playoffs one time since then. I don't I don't know if you realize what no, a rebuild yeah, really entails. I, no, I completely understand that. I completely understand the the – the element of fucking sucking during that rebuild, like I mean, that's kind of the whole point. But I, as a fan, like I'm, o- I'm okay with being bad. You know, I'm obviously come complain or whatever. But like, I think there's a difference in between me and you know some fan, especially like shit you see on tw- social media. Like a bad loss, I might be sad for that fucking day. I might be mad in the moment. I don't give a fuck about it the next day. You know, type shit. Like obviously, like I'm always grateful. I'm always, a- but it's just like I. It goes beyond that basketball game for me. Like I enjoy, I love being a fan, but it's just not finna ruin my damn day because uh, the Lakers lost or they're in a rebuild phase. You know, I just don't see Jeannie Bustin' buying into a rebuild right now. They have no it's the Lakers picks coming up, it's the and Lakers. it's like, yeah, it's the Lakers. They're gonna utilize their city to try to bring in other free agents. They're gonna be linked to every big everything name. that just happened in that season. Why would you do a rebuild? You literally started off shaky two and ten. I'm not saying they're gonna rebuild up, next season. I said I'm up, ready for a, I'm up. ready for that. I'm ready to embrace it when it does happen. That's just a I But guess. do you think it will? Considering that we're talking Lakers without their own draft. In the capital? next couple of years it has to be. I don't think it has to be. Unless it's yeah, depend, it goes back on Anthony Davis. What is y'all next pick? Two thousand twenty seven? Yeah, I mean Yeah, the pick I mean, y'all are so we would have to, we would have to get if we were going hypothetically into the rebuild phase, it would have to be like trading Anthony Davis, trading Anthony Davis and whatever is LeBron if he's still there for draft capital. Yeah, I don't think LeBron gets you five picks. Not anymore. It would, yeah, I think it's more so on Anthony Davis. I don't know if yeah, Anthony Davis, Davis is doing Davis that. Gets you five picks either. Not where his contract is situated. He's he's up for free agency after next season, right? Yeah, and or the season after that. Either way, I know one he's or two a great years talent left. And all, but injury history is, as a team taking him on. Oh my god! Team. Literally, hey, as we're talking, here's take. your here's your report. Lakers insider again. This is Lakers insider, so not anything official. Doesn't think the team will sign Anthony Davis to an extension this summer. <laughs> 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 so there you go. Um, I don't know. Again, re- rebuilding sucks, and every team that's going through a rebuild currently can attest to that. Where like you you put all your eggs in the NBA draft, and then your team drafts somebody that's yeah, not I, very good. I heard I heard the shit Naran was talking about. He lost the damn lottery. He talking about he can't wait for Kristaps to be on the position, uh, the Pistons. He waiting for a trade or some shit like that's that. That's the type of hope you get when you four years into a rebuild. Like yeah, that's a long time. The Pistons, we the Lakers, you know best, they make shit man for us. Nick Young was y'all best player for a point, so it's crazy. To and that, that's also crazy because that was one of my favorite times as a Laker fan when Lan, it was the Lance Stevens show, when it was the Nick Young show, when Ken. Yes, we did suck, but them them were actually fun times. Oh, that's cool. I'm going to look up a random game in Kendall Marshall's Lakers career, and I want to see if y'all can guess what the starter lineup was. Okay. This is 2014 versus 2014. the Indiana Pacers. Ryan Kelly started. Uh, Ryan Kelly was on the team, but he did not Xavier start. Xavier Henry? Xavier Jody Henry, Meeks? nope. Jody, Jody Meeks, Meeks started at the, th- at the two. Was Tarek Black? Tariq Black to start on center? No, he was, was not. Was it Jordan Hill? Jordan Hill is on the roster, but was he did it, not start. For oh. Chris Kamen? Chris Kamen is on the roster, but he did not start. Y'all getting the team, was which it? is dope, but not the starters. Did we say the center? Oh, no. We you still not trying to figure out the center. Yeah, the center is not. Y'all got right Mark now Kendall Lopez? Marshall and Jody, Jody Meeks. No. Who the fuck was our damn center? Bro? Robert Soccer? Robert Soccer is on the roster. Did not start. We don't read Wesley Johnson wasn't on this team. Wesley right? Johnson started at the two. Oh, yeah, let's go. I thought so. Yep. 
He okay. also in this game he had 15 points. Led y'all in scoring. So Jordy <laughs> <Pichon's> <laughs> game, basically? Yep. And, and it's, he was it, a two. I guess so. That's what it's saying on and basketball. Room. And y'all got three? another wing player that also started. They were small. Nick Young. Nick Young was on the team, not on the. He didn't play this game. It just said not with team, but he's on oh, the man. team. Uh, so Steve Nash also on the team, not with team. That was probably when he hurt his back carrying groceries. <laughs> so one, Kobe's on this team. Kobe's not on. Well, he's not in this game. Twenty fourteen. He might be injured or whatever. Dwight Howard ain't not. It's not Mm-mm. the center, is it? The center is a Hall of Famer. Pal Gasol. Pal Gasol oh, still shit. on this team. Oh, okay. So this is Kobe Nash. Dwight got traded at this point. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's why I thought it was Dwight when he said. So, y'all missing, so we're missing the four. Y'all missing the. Th- th- he's small. a three. He's a more of a three. He but um, he is the four in this lineup. He is the four in this lineup. Okay. Hypoth- I guess. I mean, it's interchangeable. Okay. It's not like he's six eight. He's not six eight. Um, la- he did he play in the league this year? Um, he played in the league last year for the Lakers. <laughs> he came back. So he was one of those ten day guys. Um, he played a total of. 40 games with the Lakers last year. Not a 10-day guy. Played a full season. Bro, my mind is drawing a fucking blank. Uh, uh, no, I was going to say ugly motherfucker. He's only 6'4". For some reason, I thought he was like 6'6 six, six or 6'7". Six, only 6'4". Um, and he played last year? He played last season for the Lakers. Small four for all of his career mostly. Kent Bazemore? Kent Bazemore. Oh, my God. The Blaze God. You also had Marshawn Brooks on the bench. Jordan Farmar on the bench. You know I love me some Marshawn Brooks. And that's it. Ooh, and then the Indiana Pacers had a little brick over here. I won't let lie. Just, let, let me try. They got yeah. Paul George. Paul George. David West. David West. George Hill. George Hill. Roy, Roy Hibbert. Hibbert. Roy Hibbert. Lance Stevenson. Starting five. Lined them up. Boom, 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 boom. Can y'all get the bench too, though? C.J. Watson. C.J. Watson on the bench. Good call, yeah. Derek. Yon Mahimi. Yon Mahimi on the bench. Come on. Keep the perfect streak alive. CJ Miles, Miles is not on Ooh, this team. Ooh, that's a good one, though. Mm. Is this Luis Scola? Luis Scola is on the <laughs> team, B. Mills. Orlando Johnson. Not on the team. <laughs> Boy, at least to be a dog. Um, one of Illinois, one of, an Illinois boy is on this team. Evan Turner. Evan Turner. Oh. Um, one player that passed away over the last couple of years may rest in peace. A guy, and then also a guy we, we saw at an airport once upon a time. Oh, Kenya Martin. Nope. Uh, fucking. We do see. I saw Trey Burke at the airport two days ago. Oh, Chris Copeland. Chris Copeland. Oh, my God. <laughs> Chris Copeland. I forgot Chris Copeland's there with the Pacers. Uh, Rasul Butler. Oh, oh yeah. Rest, rest in peace. peace. Rasul Butler. And then y'all missed uh, Donald Sloan and LaVoy Allen. I didn't think y'all were going to get that. Allen. I don't know if y'all were going to get that. Nice little stretch with, uh, with Philly with the Sixers. Yeah, so like you got a little, little bit of bag LaVoy Allen. Um, with the Pacers, if fellow. Temple's finest. What yeah. year did he leave? <laughs> I can't remember. Because oh, you know. he was out like the he first. He was out Danny a couple Granger, last year. Maybe 2013. <laughs> Inactive in players, Kobe Bryant, Xavier Henry. I think somebody guessed that. Xavier. Uh, Andrew Bynum and Solomon Hill for the Pacers. Solomon Hill. Big bad getter. Yep. What Uh-oh. college Solomon Hill went to? Mm. He was a great college player. Am I in this? Yeah. <clears throat> Zona boy. Yes. Mm. Uh, any any, any uh, NBA news? Uh, the Lakers potentially are interested in Kyrie. We kind of tied that all together. Um, it's the Lakers. I feel like they it's gonna be but even when Kyrie Irving is signed back up or whatever move he makes, Lakers are probably gonna be attached to any. I love how the Dallas name. Mavericks they come out and they debunk any rumor about them, like the sign and trade idea that people were throwing around for Kyrie. They came out immediately said we're not interested in that. They said there's no handshake deal with Kyrie Irving on the match. Handshake deal with Kyrie. They like they they come out and they debunk any rumors that may be tied to them. They don't want to be because Mark Cuban is online all fucking day. (laughs) I just seen his uh, commercial with uh, I think the State Farm commercial. Oh, without the socks. Yeah, and he's like, "This is a Cuban sandwich." Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Julius Randle also had a yeah. It's been on for the entirety playoffs. You know what's ball. Um, <laughs> Julius Randle got <laughs> surgery and he should be back ready for camp. I don't yeah. know if that's worth talking about. We Other than the fact that, oh okay, um, yeah, man, watch the fucking show and you know. You know what? I wanted to. Did you watch the? For my did flight. you watch the? Uh, well, you didn't watch it then. We had a little quiz that we did. I did see that part. You did see it. I did see that part, oh. and I was disappointed in some of y'all. I won't lie. Why? Um, fuck, Derek, you missed one. I was like, no, because I, I, I ain't going to 25 times 75 years. <laughs> What'd you say? 144? 144. It's crazy I, as fuck. I was thinking 12 times 12. Yes, you were. Um, <laughs> there was another one that was that was like, damn. Fuck. 
I didn't know integer. I can't. Did I can't you know act the like Amelia Earhart one. Yes, I knew Amelia yeah, Earhart. I thought they would. Yeah. Honestly. Um, God damn! Do you still have those questions? Did you yeah, know, I do. Did actually, you know it was something. Movies that he didn't know. I didn't get that far into it. My fucker told me I was asking Mike the hard ones. I'm like, get you. Two did Would questions you know that? Would question? you know the capital of South Dakota? Oh. Uh, the capital of South Dakota. No. I can ask you, Mike's two Denzel Washington movies. He got game and training day. Capital of South Dakota. Don't know. Michael Jordan. Oh, College. Sioux Falls. Uh, South Dakota. North Dakota. What'd you say? Michael Jordan College. North Carolina. Kobe's first ring was against who? Um. Oh shit. Um. Kobe. Kobe's first ring. Is. Is against the Pistons. No. <clears throat> Kobe's first ring. It's the, it's the Nets. It's the Nets. It's the Nets. It's the Nets. No. He wouldn't have got it either. Fuck. Right. Who's it against? The Pacers. the Pacers. Oh, Reggie Miller Pacers? Rick Value Smith's getting his ass dog. 3.14. And Name me three weed strains. Um, That hair bear. <laughs> that moon rock. <laughs> moon rock. Okay. And that blueberry kush. Uh, two young jock songs. It's going down. That's what I said for <laughs> immediately. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the one that immediately comes, and after that, it's just like, Fuck. <laughs> Two Young Jocks. I don't know a second Young Jocks song. Because he has another you big hit. Mad, he got another big hit. And look at him talking like he knew you didn't I don't know remember. this either. I don't remember it. I'm not saying I know, but I'm but just like, yeah. Like, right, but in the moment. <laughs> yeah, that shit doing, easy, KB. You got no. it. Oh, my God. He had another big hit. What is it? I know. Oh fuck! Eight times eight. Uh, sixty-four. Nobody Sh- better got that shit. College. LSU. Main character of San Andreas. Any main character? The main character. In any of the movies? I mean, oh, any GTA of the. GTA San Andreas. Oh, San Andreas. Yeah. Um, CJ. Boom. There you go. Boom. South no, uh, capital of South Dakota is Pierre. Oh. Okay. What was Derek's original questions though? Uh, Derek's original questions was, "What is the capital of California?" Which you got Sacramento, Sacramento, right? Twenty-five times twenty-five. Two, the six twenty-five. What doctor specializes? That in way, children? he said starts with a P. Yeah, and I was like, tri- "It's a yeah. fuck come on, Derek." That was the one I was pediatric. like, "You got that?" I was like, "Fuck, it's a P." I just couldn't. You gonna be remember. going to the pediatrician a good amount. So. Okay, Pierre, Pierre missed this one. Mm-hmm. Can you spell the word handkerchief? No, I saw him misspell that, and I was like, "I couldn't." That was, that's harder than competition. Handkerchief? No. That's hard enough. I'll try. H A N K E R. No. See, like <laughs> looking at it, I'm gonna tell you where probably people be fucking up. It's it starts off like hand, not hand. Oh. H A N D kerchief. Uh-huh. Got chief. Kerchief. If you wanna phonetically Anchor. say it. Ooh. That's crazy. Ellie Dada Clues just got called up. Oh. Which means that Jonathan in- India might get traded. There we go. Cincinnati Reds. Put that in NBA yeah. terms for me. It's like hmm, he's a number one pro he's a number four prospect in the world right now. Okay. Just came up to the league. So Cool Henderson just get made his debut. Yeah, something like that. Oh wow! Oh, but shit. also, he's doing it for a team that has a uh, mm, aspirations. Uh, no, the the Jonathan India plays his position. He won Rookie of the Year like two, three years ago. He's not as good anymore, so they might move him out of the way to get Ellie Dela Cruz. Baseball, is those crazy, um, things. Mm-hmm. I would trade for Jonathan India. I think he's a stud. I don't even know what position he plays. Just second baseman. Oh, I love that second MLB baseman. Show and you don't know who Jonathan India. Or you Ellie don't got a ninety nine card. I don't know who he is. That's nah. I understand that from your perspective. Why the fuck would you play with his seventy three overall card? Oh, I see you having them supercharged yeah. card. I see you in but BR. When you playing against teams and conquests and shit, you don't be seeing these niggas. I, I think he just. I don't play conquests no more. I mean, uh, it's very rare that I do. And then if I do, they be playing the same fucking team. I'll like, be on like Boston. Baseball is crazy because he'll get called up today and his ass will be in the lineup. Like, <laughs> there's no transition time. There's no that commute. Be, yeah. He's he's there, and I'm gonna look and see if they they announced that he's on. No, the f- the coolest thing in MLB is when we went to the Sox game where they unfortunately they blew that lead. But I remember in the show you could replay that moment. They Josh they Mayweather. put it as a moment twice. Last so, year they had it as a moment, and this year they had it as a moment. Yeah. And I'm like, damn. And I was like, I'm literally in those stands over I there. I literally yeah. remember telling your dad, I don't know. He could, damn, they might hit a grand slam. And since that moment, I've hated Josh Naylor's then fucking skin. Hated him. Slam. Yeah. But you said they were. Ch- Derek they, been on our they, ass. He trying to go to another one. He trying to go to a Wrigley specifically. He I said, like "Fuck, that. fuck the White Sox." One, I don't care. Put that fire oh. on them. It, the one thing about it though, going to a baseball game is exhausting. It is. It is. You sit like in the sun for done, three hours. T- like that trip we had from Wrigley, I was oh, so yeah. tired. 
and we pulled up to Derek's house, and I had to get in my car and drive home. Like, <sighs> I guess next time if we do Uber, we could just have it pick both of us. The up. Orioles are in town. Oh no, we're gonna be in Miami for this. Never mind. The Phillies. To go. I'm not going to see the guards. I was gonna say I'm not going nowhere in Miami. This I'm going one place and one place only. Uh, Sox versus Cubs at the end of the month. You said Sox versus Cubs. Oh no, it's not. My my yeah, calendar is tripping. August. It's in. It's at the end of July. Oh. So yeah, my you calendar's tripping. Talking about that one for a minute too. Um, I don't know. We get, get, get into a, get into the ballpark. It is. It is. Yeah, it it's is. fun. I went tw- twice. <laughs> Um, I would, would y'all rather go to the one at Guarantee Rate or Wrigley? Wrigley, uh, Wrigley's I, a better I, ballpark. I, yeah, I wouldn't really care, but Wrigley is turned. But except the only thing I don't like about Wrigley is when the sun is out that you can't. can't you avoid it. you scorching, yeah. Unless you get the like the seats that's underneath the second row. Yeah. Um, I don't know some old ass ballpark. Roof. Just being down the bowl, you'd will. Tractable get roof is scorched. Some, did y'all see the uh the the Bears talking to Naperville about yeah, yeah. I'll put that in the chat. Oh, okay. Okay. They would yeah. like be moving the stadium? But yeah, well they were trying to find up. So it was originally Arlington Heights or Arlington Park Naperville. or whatever. Now they mean with Naperville to build a new stadium for the Bears to play in. Tenet. Yeah, P- literally playing, not like practice. No, shit like, like, no like, like the stadium will be in Naperville. The stadium will be, be in Naperville. First of all, I couldn't even imagine the fucking traffic. That's what, over I, there. That's yeah. what I said. I, that was the first thing I said. The traffic in the Bears will be crazy, ridiculous. But I could, because I don't know. Like, a, you, a lot of sports teams have their arenas outside of the city. Mm-hmm. It's it's pretty normal, but it feels weird for Chicago. Just because it's always been downtown, and it's always been close to the I water. Would, I would wonder yeah. like how the traffic, like does our streets. Would it be able to operate like that city trip? Because it's going to be a lot of people that come out. Yeah, it depends on where exactly. And Naperville is pretty damn big. Mm-hmm. Um, what part of Naperville they're looking at? Uh, but I, yeah, I couldn't imagine. I it. might be going to more Bears games if it would. I don't know if I would. I mean, it'd be better for, yeah, commute wise for commute us. Wise, commute wise is probably the reason. But why I can't I, act like I care about the Bears because they're in Naperville. I yeah. wouldn't. It wouldn't even be necessarily a care. It's just no. being an event. You know. Yeah. I mean, if the ticket yeah, prices like are crazy, be different. To, yeah. Well, the Bears are going to be good by that time. I feel like I haven't gone to a Bears game strictly because it is downtown. And uh, the reason I haven't gone is because it's in the fucking wintertime. I'm not sitting yeah. outside in the cold. I'm sorry. And if they, I feel like if they do good, something new is going to be in a dome. Wrap up. You think I so? I would hope so. I don't know, man. Chicago, Chicago boist about, boist about its weather and shit. Yeah, I don't think it'd be a dome. Like they like the advantage of the weather. Is that what yeah. you The yeah. windy city. No, that's smart, though. It is a home court advantage. Or retractable shit. roofs or a dome, fucking great, though. You have to worry about nothing. Roof is different. A dome, I don't think they're doing it. A retractable roof would be fucking. Is insane. is the Rangers a retractable roof? The one we went to, I know yes, it was closed when we is. were there, but it is retractable. Yeah, yeah. that was a fun. I, I gotta time. look up a video for a football field. I feel like that's got to be insane to like watch that process. Um, don't I mean, the Cowboys the have what? The Cowboys they have do. retractable. Because that's such a fucking long area you got to cover up. Yeah, at, at least a hundred. Yards, 100 yeah. feet at least 100 Bro, yards one of the shit I be, I be if you're thinking about all the fucking like um the just like the whole industry or like industrial part of just like how we evolved as like just humanity mm-hmm. and how like you know probably like 100 years ago or even just probably like 80 years ago how they were building buildings and shit niggas just had nothing but a hard hat on just building shit yeah, no yeah. niggas falling off thinking about the highway the high yeah, i be thinking so much because like the highway covers literally every part of the fucking like Somebody had to build that and literally and draw it and make it connect to this yeah. part. Everything yeah. in you, you, the U.S. at least, I don't know about any other place, is connected. Like I can get from point A to point B no matter where. Mm-hmm. Like w- there'll be a way. Yeah, which is kind of cool. That shit always kind of amazes me. Yeah, I mean yeah. Wrigley was built in like 1914, so that that Damn. fucking structure's been over a hundred years old. Wow. Um, I enjoyed my time. There. That was a good one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mike didn't go right. Mike mm-hmm. wasn't no. there because he had. S- Passport shit? Well, you lied or I not something? No, I had to get my passport. Okay. Did you? Did y'all passports come in? No, it doesn't no? come in yet. How about they sent me a letter. Saying oh, Derek has already had his. They, they didn't know my social security number. So you had to refile or some shit. I just wrote. They literally said write it right. What was? <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> <laughs> what was it? Uh, it's crazy with the government. Anything they do is slow as fuck. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> they have this information. It's such an inefficient. There's no way that they can't get my social security. If they wanted to find you, they could get your shit. Exactly. <laughs> I cannot wait for us to go. To, out of all of the places that's on our tour, I'm most excited about to, going back to Toronto. Toronto should be fun as fuck. It was so nice, bro. I was so impressed. 
Because, like, a lot of these other cities, I have, like, some frame of reference of what it looks like, what's yeah. the feel. Like, when we go to Miami, I've never been to Miami, but I have an idea of what Miami you is like. Idea of me, yeah. I had no frame of reference for Toronto at all. Beautiful. Walkable. I'm excited for Seattle, too. Is that it? Are we officially weather, like, doing that, though? I, I I feel like that was one of the things that we get told about, but it never comes through. So, I guess we'll see. I was the weather. The first day was, like, 90. Oh, the second shit. day was, like, 82. And the people I were talking to that lived there was like, you came at the perfect time. This is not normal. So don't expect it to be 90 when we get there in August. But it was beautiful, man. Shit, I'd rather say I'd prefer it to be a colder than to be 90. It, it was the most influential trip I've ever been on, like with the people I've talked to and all that stuff. It was a lot, it was a lot of people at that wedding that was like, damn, he do, he do what? Shit, can can you know. introduce me to him? Type shit. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's yeah. good. Um, I remember you said some things about like us working with creators and you like felt like, that was influenced you on like just being around successful creators was like mm -hmm. big. It is. Yeah. And I think it goes bigger than creators, just successful people in general. Yeah. When you ask them like what they do and how they got there, like you hear they grind, you're like, damn, that make me want to go harder. Um, it was also uh, a traditional Jewish wedding and I've never been to a Jewish wedding before. So their, their like traditions surprised me and it was, it was just cool to see a different form of culture. What kind of music were they playing? I know I remember you showed the party, but like, they were playing all all over the place. Oh, yeah, really? yeah, that's good. Um, but they had a live band though, so it was like Damn. there was only so much you could do as far as hip hop goes. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, but one of the performers was a brother, so it was a couple songs where he was rapping. Take a look at my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> She's the only one I like. Nah, 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 nah. It was beautiful, man. It was a great time. And now they're in France. Bro. Oh wow! Yeah, it was a honeymoon. My favorite. Part of that remind me my favorite movie is off I think it was like scary movie two or three where they start off and they all singing in the songs and they singing that that I thought I told y'all they singing some oh, mystical. Yeah. Right, 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 right. If they would have said that, you would have been lit. They started singing. I would have been looking around to see who said the lyrics word by word. That's mm -hmm. what I was gonna be doing. <laughs> Cause yeah. Um I, I was the one I was the only brother there. The only brother there. I was the only brother I mean, there. Just the can just in, in Toronto feel, like how many uh you know, brothers with her. It was very diverse. Oh, okay. Oh, really? It was cool, very cool. diverse. Um, Very, very, like, a actually, you know what? I think our Toronto show is going to be our biggest show. Because this is what happened. I got off the plane, and one of the people that was working at the airport recognized me immediately. Then I we, we um got a car. I don't normally rent cars, but I was like, let's rent a car. And then when I got to the, air the, the hotel, the dude that valeted our car knew who I was. And then we walked around the city because, you know, I got to go to my Chick-fil-A. The dude working at Chick-fil-A, shout out to Thomas. He was a fan. And then walking back from Chick-fil-A, I ran into another dude. that was. A, I ran into five different fans in my yeah, day and a half like there. That shit, I'm a move there. That's what I'm saying, bro. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't know Toronto had this much love. So when we do that live show, I'm expecting the numbers to be kind of crazy, honestly. Mm. It better be. Yeah. When y'all look at the demographic, is it one of our top demographics on the uh, YouTube analytics? I'm not sure. I think it was. I think that's why I went no discussion. They like oh, have made it like yeah. we go in there. That Some of the other good. places they kind of discussed like, should we go here? Should we? they was like Toronto. Toronto was like a for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I think Houston's gonna be nice too. I've always wanted to go to Houston. So the United States has sixty two percent of our viewership. Makes sense. Yeah. And then Canada has six percent, which is second highest. Oh, shit. Uh, Australia has 3%. So it has two times as many viewers as any other country outside of the USA. Mm -hmm. We also got 1% in in Italy. Y'all trying to hit up Italy, Italy. for a live show? <laughs> Come on, man. I love, uh, you know, shout out to, uh, to Canada, our, our North American brother. Yeah. And the first thing you see when you get off the plane is a picture of Kawhi's shot against the 76ers. Really? We, we, really we the North. Dope. We the North. Um, so I don't know. It, it was fun. I think... That trip, I wish Amwar was here so we could start talking about the trip that we have after this Miami trip because we got some shit to take care of before that. Um, but I cannot, I cannot wait for the shit that y'all gonna see on the YouTube channel. Uh, we got some cool stuff coming, and like I said earlier, this is the worst episode of Through the Wire you ever listen to again. Cause we love better everyone. I okay. hope so. I, 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 <laughs> I can be, only count for myself. I don't be buying the bullshit. I, it, it be shit be sounding good. Yeah. I'm pledging to it. You could call me out any time. If you feel I'm lacking. Bet it up. I like that form of accountability. Say, yeah, say less. Because I would niggas. I'm gonna hold y'all to that same thing. Too. I, I expect I'm you to. All, I always want if I'm not held to it, I don't know. Don't just leave it up here too. Leave it on that court too for me, P. I'll leave it on the court for you. <laughs> Bully me, P. 
<laughs> he don't want that. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Why are you saying P? Because that's what the comments say that you are bullied. Oh, for the sake of <laughs> we wanted to anybody can hold each other accountable. That's yeah. what I don't like about through the wire. I feel like it'd be looked at for me to say shit. You know what I'm I feel like I got a good voice in those meetings. I, th- and shit. I think, yeah. I think that, y'all that, just say it differently. I try not to sugarcoat a lot of shit, especially when we're talking to people that are outside of this four. Because I feel like in a lot of cases when you talk to people in work, that sugarcoating it could get like confused. I don't I won't say weakness, but like I don't know. If I if I say something very stern, then they know that I'm I'm serious about it rather than trying to get away from it a little yeah. bit. Like, no, we gotta do this. To we should way. do this. Yeah. And I know it comes off the wrong way, but at the end of the day, every everything that I say in those meetings and shit is because I want to create the best possible content. And as long as everybody know that and it ain't no hard feelings towards nobody, then I think it's great. No, I agree. I th- I just think it hit harder when it's when it's everybody saying the same shit or everybody's expressing it versus just me and you saying it. If that's how we really feel. That's why at the basketball court, when John and Kyron spoke up, I'm like yeah, say that. Don't make it. Because then if I'm the only person saying something about how D Mills is playing or if Mike is the only one saying something about how D Mills is playing, it's like, oh, there go Mike saying it's typical D Mills shit. But when Kyron say something, John say something, or KB is like, come on, let's get a board. It hit different. <laughs> it lets you know. That's how yeah. everybody feeling that same There way. are certain places where I definitely don't feel confident. Like if I went to the court and you fucking up and I'm like, come on, P. And I look and I got <laughs> what fucking one for seven on the but, day. It feels different. But it, would let me, it would let me know, though. Shit, okay, let me go. Yeah, now, KB, KB yeah. Said something. KB, I would feel the same way. It hit different when everybody I feel like something. I'm a vocal leader when I'm in my, my place that I feel the best. I'm not going to be a vocal leader on the court because I'm like the fucking fourth best player at best on the team. But if we, but if everybody. I'm be the best leader. I can be PJ Tucker. Tucker. I can be, be some of the best leaders, though, For when sure. you're not the top person. When everybody hold each other accountable, then nobody can fall. Because if I have seven and I think that means I can't get back on D. We can lose the game from that just because I think, oh, I got the no. most points. But if somebody like, come on, P, we got you, come on, we got to get the rebounds. Mm-hmm. Then it's like, you're right. Can't even argue that. Real is real. And it's the same thing. If we having some shit, we want merch that's through the wire. Can't go in a meeting and then P is the one saying, man, come on, where, where the merch at? What are we saying? Because then it's like, oh, here go P again. But now when D Mills going there, like, damn, what happened to the merch I thought we was going to have for the live show? Mm-hmm. Now it's like, oh, shit, you know what I'm saying? Because that's what motherfuckers do. I'll be noticing that. Motherfuckers try to act like, oh, here, here go. It go P. Now P got another. Okay, KB don't want to do that. Nah, motherfucker. It, we expected some shit. Yeah. It hit different if Mike coming in like, what a video? What a, what a video we were supposed to have that dropped? What, what happened to that video? Don't we got like two videos that we have not dropped? Yeah. But I but see, in that regards, I feel like it's mainly you that says that. But if Dare come in there one day like, uh, where's that video? It's like, oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? It's like. We do just be filming videos and just sit on them. You know, just gotta, you just gotta do it as as a team. So yeah. it ain't no narrative with nobody acting like, even a live show with at the Philly thing. It's sitting right here. It's been uploaded for three weeks, and it's just sitting here with no thumbnail or nothing. I'm gonna put in the group chat right now. The Philly footage that we didn't get. I told Anwar to hold him accountable, and you know what Derek did? We appreciate you, Anwar. You don't have to tell him that because I just held him accountable. Yeah, he's a he get a check. He know he appreciate it. Yeah, everybody get paid to do what they do. But shit, when we hold each other accountable, don't need nobody to come back and be a uh, officer sweetener. <laughs> <laughs> we we appreciate you, baby, and nobody. We trying to get shit done. We we when it's time to play, we all play. I'm here for play time. But at the same time, when it's time to work, I'm definitely here for work time too. For sh- on, on 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 for show for show, yeah. You have a word of the day, KB. Oh, let's see. What the, give me one. Let's see. What I'm, I'm that. I'm I'm really trying to expand my vac- vocabulary, so I've been trying to focus on words of the day. Your okay. vernacular. T- today's word Ooh, of the day. There it is. I know what that means. I'm looking for words that that's not that's you know true. that's trenchant. Trenchant, trenchant is a formal word that usually is used to describe communications that is notably strong, clear, and perceptive. Other words like sharp. Could so if you, you if you come into those meetings very trenchant, then okay. there's no miscommunications ever, and everybody knows exactly what we want. Oh, that's how you my, use it in context? I don't yes, know. Maybe. Yesterday, my word was ambrosial. How do you shit. use ambrosial in a sentence? It's like I love going to 
Um, I love going to my garden because the flowers are so ambrosial. So they're like va- they're like vibrant and it's colorful? it's just like very very rich and like either smell or taste. It's basically like seeing like say beautiful. It, say it one more time for me. Ambrosial. Oh, so so Derek and your next food review and that shit hidden. It's ambrosial. Mm, this shit's very ambrosial. I can't even say it. Yeah. <laughs> ambrosial. Yeah. Oh, what, what food what we eating in Phil, um, uh, Miami? Cuban. <laughs> he finna All get that Mark them. Cuban sandwich. <laughs> All of the Cuban foods. Not for one real, dish. For Cuban. I've been wanting to get authentic Cuban food from Miami for a while. Damn, I thought they had like some type of, some type of shit. No, Miami has a huge Cuban community. Cause it's right. Oh off. yeah, yeah. yeah right some off. some dude messes me about barbecue. I'm like, bro, Miami, my second home. I'm not getting no barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'm gonna I'll say that I was gonna tell you though. He said something about a barbecue place. I'm gonna tell you when it's time to go. But I haven't been in a couple of years, a few years, so I don't know if they got any new restaurant. You know how restaurants be coming now. Yeah. You gotta try. I remember when we went. DJ Khaled had just opened up his restaurant. I'm like, what the fuck? You was said that, that where it was trenchant. Trenching. I'll be writing down the words yeah. so like in a week or two I, I can test myself. I was showing you start using these words in your stream and shit. I used, because uh, I'm like I said, I'm writing these words down. It's like I'm a little unfamiliar with them. And it's like I get to use more of my sentence. I got ambrosial. Uh, I used attrition yesterday, which is like the natural effect, you know, reduce or whatever. You've used that word before. You know yeah. what? I, I also wrote, I learned what a bungalow was. Hmm. Bungalow? Yeah, it's like a like a, like a flat bed, a flat bed house with a you know a big porch. Remember CJ had the song Bungalow. Uh, repose. You know what repose means? Repose. It's like laying flat or dead. So it's like a nigga took a charge and he looked dead on the court. You might say that, but he's in repose right now. Okay, sound like you need to be calling some games. I might. He's repo- I, repose. Also, a shroud on here. Horrible. You know what shroud means? Shroud. Yeah. No, it's a not, not the not the Twitch stream. Okay. I looked up. I heard the word. I looked it up. And the first thing that came up was fucking a picture of shroud, not the actual meaning. It's one of the greatest. But yeah, it just means to you know be enclosed, enveloped in. Oh, mm. oh wow, enclosed. So, enclosed. You might say Drew Holiday is shrouding fucking Jamal Murray. Just whatever. Shrouding. Question I have. It sounds very baby. sexual. Are you a, <laughs> are you a watcher or you throw money? I couldn't tell. I have no frame of reference. I want to throw. Some I think money. I'll come in with the idea of throwing. But if the vibes ain't right, I'm not throwing. Because at the end of the day, it's just money, but it is still money. At the end, you know what I'm what saying? What if it ain't show money? Oh, then I'm throwing the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see some money? Was the Canadian dollars? You know what I'm saying? You take gotta a, go take to a, a currency change. Take a quick this fiver. This actually look very fucking take cool. Take a quick fiver. That, look cool. that blue one? It's look here. You want to hold it? They, they don't have cool ones and there. twos or one dollar bills. You get their coin. That transparent part in the book. That shit look raw. Yeah, that's Get my crazy. money back, motherfucker. Like, I'm it feels like I would rip that there's, shit. That's their skyscraper right there? It's plastic, babe. It's plastic. Oh. Can't rip it. It's not paper. So I can't rip it. I mean, you probably could. Okay. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> but like compared to a normal dollar, I mean, I, yeah. can, I, can, I can rip this 20. Relatively you don't easy. Have no that shit don't mean nothing, man. You see that real 20? That shit is fake. You do give it back, right? Money got a smell to it. Theirs don't. Yeah. Mm. And they got the queen on this joint. But yeah, because when we when we take you for, in Miami yeah. for your, 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 your dig. I might be throwing some of these. You want to see. Fibers. I want to. I'm very. <laughs> I was telling them I'm very curious to see how you act in element. Me too. People, I, I have no see, idea. I, I want to see all of us, number one. I'm yeah. ready to act the fool. But I want to see Anwar and I want to see you. Mm-hmm. I want to see Anwar because he, he tries so hard to be cool in every situation he does. And I want to see you because you're the smallest one. And I've been off the market for a decade. So if you got a big, thick woman on you, that's going to be hilarious because yeah. you're going to be so little. Yeah. <laughs> got to control myself. I want to see I want to see Derek balance eating chicken wings and throwing money and participating. She's going to have some damn uh, fucking open pit barbecue sauce on it on a $100 bill. Are you throwing honeys? He throwing uh, honeys? He's fancy. Uh, uh, what? A handprint on on somebody's ass with barbecue sauce fingers. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a little bit of buffalo sauce. Got a little mix of ranch in it too. The D mail stamp. <laughs> I'm, I've been here. I was telling KB. I just seen. Uh, I rewatched Wolf of Wall Street. You know how they be getting down in that motherfucker. So mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah. I've never. I've actually never seen it. It's. It's a very good movie to watch. I've never I seen know. a full throughout St. Pete. I know it's long. That's the reason I It's three hours it. long. Yeah. yeah. Fuck that. I respect But they Leo. was getting down in that motherfucker. Yeah, I respect but Leo. That, 
also goes to the fame where you was like, the nigga spent, oh, he spent like half a million or whatever on a wedding. Them motherfuckers, they was going all out. So that's the top of the top. That's what I expect your wedding to be like, right? No, I spent not very much money on my wedding. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true. But I mean, you're comparing it to that. It ain't shit. But I, yeah. Because you haven't, you're going to have, you flying out for the reception, right? You I'm flying, flying overseas? At, flying out for the reception? Nah, I just, I, but you know what's funny? My so, cousin did an on location wedding in Jamaica. That's the type of shit I need. But he didn't want, he didn't want, Randos to show up. Y'all have an open a bar, so that's why. That's another thing. I think our bar is open. Are you hey. gonna have a joint bar? Um, no. My our wedding is gonna be an old wedding. I don't have a lot of friends. My friends are all in the wedding, you know. So it's I not food gonna be there. Uh, I don't know. I thought you. Were, I thought I a lot of your anything. family be there too. Huh? Your, a lot of your family gonna be there too, right? Yeah, but I don't. Bub my, be there? My, no, Bub did not <laughs> urge me. <laughs> My cousin asked me about that yesterday. Did you invite all your other cousins? I invite them. Nobody's RSVP. Only person that's RSVP is Pierre because he's in the I fucking have a, wedding. I have an RSVP. Well, you're in the wedding. You still should, but you're in the yeah, wedding, no, so I'm I expecting am, you to be there. But like all of our other cousins, I, nobody. Because uh, so I was at I was at um my crib yesterday. And Mason was there, or whatever. And my like, mom would just I, called I I, me and said I got the invitation. We like, showed up at her house. Oh yes, yeah. Because my dad, my dad is so funny too. So he got that little thing in the mail, or he got the invitation in the mail. He texted me. He didn't say like I have Control's wedding for you. Then he said, "Oh yeah, I think I got Control's wedding. Like I think I got Control's wedding invitation." I'm like, "Okay, are you saying you like you're gonna bring it to me or whatever?" And he just he just added. He just said it weird, but I just opened it up. I opened it up with Mason. He's like, "Oh shit, I might have to open it up so I could RSVP." Yeah, because we didn't even know where that mug was at at first. Yeah, for arrival time. What time do y'all want me to put? For the Tootsies. Oh, that's not something we talk about on the podcast. Oh, true. Um, right, then there's a line of niggas there <laughs> for through the wall. <laughs> they finna be in the section and shit. <laughs> um, is that it? Yeah. Thank y'all so much for watching and listening to this episode of Through the Wire. Um, be sure to RSVP, ttwtour.com. We're in Miami. That's our next stop. We need y'all there. I don't think you want to miss that one. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. Yeah. I got a fit. I got to gonna be, be chest out. I got to figure chest out, out and everything. I got to figure out the shorts, but I got the top, and yeah, it's kind of chest out. You know, mm -hmm. I haven't decided my fit. Are you gonna be oh, okay I'm without gonna, us doing I'm it for you? Yeah, I'm okay. Do a west side, and we going to Miami. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. West side. I will see y'all on Saturday. Saturday for Cali. Cali. Um, peace.